It's a chilly day in San Antonio, but for these teams, the cold never bothered them anyways. Welcome to the Tiger Network as Trinity University takes on East Texas Baptist. The ETBU Tigers ranked 16th in the nation. Here's their starting lineup as they head up to bat. Tristan Maddox, shortstop, number 22. Number one, right fielder Emma Bell, Courtney White, second baseman, Delaney Loya, first baseman, third baseman, Torin Cummings. The pitcher is Haley Stum, designated player Hannah Kelly, catcher Brady Glenn, and left fielder Mary Frances Ellis. That is your lineup for ETBU as they get set to take on this Trinity Tigers pitcher, freshman Cameron Bishop, who had quite a great opening career start for herself in her college career. I'm Reader Zoss, joined by Caleb Reed on the Tiger Network. And Caleb, we got to see Cameron Bishop perform some magic against Howard Payne, didn't we? Cameron Bishop had quite possibly one of the best pitching performances that I have ever seen at any level, men's or women's. It was the definition of domination, I think you could say. Just an absolutely incredible day. Complete game shutout in her very first collegiate start. 11 strikeouts, almost double the number of strikeouts that she had in terms of players allowed on base overall. Only five hits allowed, no walks. It have one hit by pitch, which, which made it six players allowed on base overall. But it was a fantastic night for her very first time that a, or, or very first time that a Trinity Tiger has gone a complete game shutout in her first career start as a freshman since 2010. But that 2010 performance was a five inning shutout and not a seven inning shutout, which makes it even more impressive. We are almost underway as Bishop gets the call for the first pitch to Tristan Maddox. And the first pitch is a hit by pitch. Shaky start for the first year as Maddox finds her way on first base via the hit by pitch. Two slot right Gonna get the replay there, and yep, it did just bounce right off of her bicep there. And you can see from our camera behind home plate, it is really windy out here, cloudy, windy. Definitely not the best day to play or, or to be playing softball, especially considering what we had on opening day here at home. But you know, it definitely could be worse. With the player up to bat right now, Emma Bell, freshman out of Eustis, Texas. Definitely going to be playing a lot more of a Hayden Del Toro role, I feel. She is an absolute speed demon, uh, set a, or, or, or broke a 42-year-old record at her high school in terms of the 100-meter dash. So she's a speed threat on the base paths. Base stolen by Maddox. Throw is not in time from Jordan Williams, who is completing the battery with Bishop today. Defensive lineup for the Tigers. Carson Lee over at first. Samantha Tagawa at second, Angela Botzel playing short, Marina De Luna over at third, Hayden Del Toro out in left, Sydney Watson in center, and Jordan Arce in right as your defensive lineup for the Trinity Tigers. So that one hit out in to left field. Hayden Del Toro ranges in to get it. No movement on the bases. Tristan Maddox has to stay on second as Emma Bell is retired. Now Courtney White. Another great bat for ETBU last year. Batted 416. Definitely a threat to get on base. And some early pressure for Bishop as Maddox at her back, having to deal with White. The senior, her last run, they want to make it a good one as ETBU last year was absolutely stellar. 39 win season, made it to the NCAA tournament. They play in a tough conference where UMHB had really progressed to compete with ETBU, but ETBU still reigned supreme in that conference. A little bunt attempt. Nothing going there as it is a 2-0 count now. So no strike called. So smart batting right now for Courtney White. Bishop definitely does not seem as confident uh, during this first inning as she did last time out. Uh, her very first start started strikeout, uh, pop out, and then strikeout. So 
This first inning, definitely not what she's used to. Of course, it's still very early on, only her second career start, but it is going to be interesting to see how she adapts to uh, a much better team than Howard Payne is, but also with these weather conditions as well. 3-0 pitch, too far inside, and runners on first and second now. As Courtney White stays page, patient at the plate. That leads up to the cleanup spot, number 21, Delaney Loya. Loya looking to perform her role well. One out on the board for Trinity. They have force outs at everywhere but home. So maybe trying to get a good grounder. Bishop puts that one in for a strike. So ahead in the count for Loya, which is what we saw quite a bit against Howard Payne. You mentioned being patient at bat for Courtney White, and that's something that she did a lot last season. Led the team in terms of walks with 23, as that one's fouled back, but led the team in terms of walks with 23 last season, and that was actually tied at the top of the mark for, or for these 2023 um, ETBU Tigers with the player currently at the plate, Loya. Loya, 0-2 count, finds herself in a hole. Bishop with the payoff pitch. Bit too high. Loya giving a little bit of a check swing. One, two count now. Still plenty to work with for Bishop. She has two pitches to spare, but I'm certain that she really wants to get Loya out right here. One, two pitch, one out on the board. It's hit over into right, may stay in, it does not goes off the netting, so foul ball. And both sides reset for the next pitch. Last season, Delaney Loya also led the team in terms of doubles. Did not have any triples, but 17 doubles on this season. So whenever she makes contact with the ball, she can definitely pop it into the outfield and then, and then definitely use that speed to her advantage. Didn't do a lot of stealing on the base pass, but does have that off the bat speed. Next pitch. Hit over into right field, and that one goes foul. Dangerous, dangerous hit potentially right there. But perhaps the wind coming into a little bit of effect there. Flag out in center field, practically ironed out towards the right. So once again, one, two, count. It is still the same situation for Bishop. Maddox at her back, white to her left. Bishop, another one-two pitch. Popped over into right field, ranging over. RC makes the play, and now they're going to tag up both runners. And the throw over to third, allowing White to tag up from first to second. Maddox tagging up from second to third. Deluna trying to get the throw from RC, but RC's throw just didn't have the power it needed. So even more dangerous situation right now, probably the most undesirable situation for Bishop. Two outs on the board, runners on second and third. No force outs other than at first as Torin Cummings comes up to bat. Another senior on this ETBU lineup. First pitch, misses for ball one. The Cummings last season played in every single game that they had, also led the team in terms of triples. A pretty good average last season, 362. Definitely above average. Uh, not just in terms of softball averages, but also on the team overall. A senior out of Houston takes that one for ball two. We'll see if they perhaps opt for the unintentional, intentional walk and get a force out on every bag. Bishop taking the call that she's given. That one is fouled out. Go back into the TUPD house. Have another ball, another souvenir for themselves to collect. That one went off the roof and actually I think hit a window. So lucky that they've reinforced the windows over there. Definitely something that you've got to be thinking of whenever you live sharing a property line with a softball field. Bishop's 2-1 pitch. That one may stay fair as RC goes over into foul territory, makes the catch. 
So ETBU strands runners on second and third. They're scoreless in the first frame. We head to the bottom of the first where the Tigers batting lineup will be started off with Hayden Del Toro, Samantha Tagawa, and Hannah Boudreau due up. We'll take a break on the Tiger Network as they get ready. Welcome Tigers. back to the Tiger Network. One, Hayden, Hayden Del Toro, number one on her jersey as the leadoff batter. Had a great series against Concordia. Rough times against Howard Payne, though. 0 for 5 in that double header with a pair of strikeouts. Hoping to improve her prospects here. She's definitely got the speed to run out of grounder. We'll see what the game plan is as Haley Stum. First pitch gets away from Brady Glenn. That's also going to be the first collegiate pitch for Haley Stum, the freshman out of Cypress, Texas. Both of these teams, both Trinity and ETBU, both the Tigers going with lefties here to start out this Saturday series. That one just a little bit too high. So good patience from Del Toro, 2 0 count as Haley Stum and Brady Glenn are the battery for ETBU in this one. Next pitch from Stum. In there for a strike, 2-1 count, as Del Toro remains patient against her Tiger counterpart in Stum. You can see Tor Torin Cummings, third baseman, playing a little in. That one fouled off. Got to watch out if you're Samantha Tagawa on deck. Nearly hit her in the ankle. You can also see over at first, number 21, Delaney Loya, junior out of Austin, also playing in. They're both expecting a little dribbler to them. Next pitch gets away. So 3-2 count. We are juiced in the count department as Tristan Maddox is your shortstop, Courtney White, your second baseman, and coach Janae Shirley having high words of praise for those two up the middle. That one will be fair. Little liner down the left field line for Hayden Del Toro. Tigers on first with their first hit of the game. It definitely didn't make anybody stand up immediately off the bat, but that one just a nice little one right past the outstretched glove there of Cummings. I think that if she was playing in, in maybe her traditional spot and not so closed in, she would have been able to get that one. But mentioning the speed threat of Del Toro, that forced them to consider the bunt opportunity and forced them to play in. And ultimately, her, uh, her, her body of work, her resume from last season was enough to potentially be able to get her her hit right there. Tagawa takes strike one. Samantha Tagawa making a name for herself for Trinity very early on. 1-1 one, one count now. She takes on for a ball. Your outfield trio for ETBU. Jalen Perez over in center field. Emma Bell in a right field. And Mary Francis Ellis over in left. Next pitch from Stum. Little grounder. They're not going to get the out at second. Throw to first. We'll be in time. Tigers advance the runner as Del Toro reaches second, but just too, too slow of a grounder to force the double play. You saw Maddox going over and immediately throwing to first, knowing that 
getting Del Toro out at second is a lost cause. And, and that's something that Maddox really brings to this team. Being a senior, she's got very, very high baseball IQ. And, you know, of course, uh, we mentioned that one given right over to Maddox. And very quickly, two outs in the inning now. That, that bat only lasted one pitch as Hannah Boudreaux immediately gave a sharp grounder over to Tristan Maddox. We mentioned uh, her batting abilities uh, whenever uh, whenever she came to the plate, but Maddox also has some incredible fielding as well. She's just a complete overall package and something that got a lot of praise from this ETBU coaching staff earlier this week. Carson Lee playing the role of cleanup hitter today for Trinity. Takes the first pitch for a ball. With the speed of Del Toro on second, hit into the outfield, maybe enough to bring her home. The next pitch is a ball. Incredible patience from Lee. That was a nice looking pitch, but Stum not getting the favorable call from the umpire, so great eye by Lee. Still a 2-0 count. Looking for the first strike is Stum. That one's too high. 3-0 count. Wonder if they will have Lee just stand there and make Stum throw a strike to her or if she will get the green light to swing away. Stum wind up in the pitch. That one in there for a strike on the inside. So 3-1 count, batter's desired count perhaps. We'll see if Lee now has the green light. Del Toro on second. Stumps 3-1 pitch, too low. So runners on first and second for the Trinity Tigers, bit of a similar situation as ETBU had in the top of the first. But now you have Jordan, Jordan Williams coming up to bat. We'll see if the senior is able to drive in a run for the Trinity Tigers. Certainly has the patience to draw a walk. Williams, as you can see on your screen so far, coming into this game with a 3.33 average. She did absolutely fantastic. Got a lot of praise from Coach Whitnauer in terms of her performance, not just with the bat, but also in or, or, or also in the field. Had a fantastic save during game number two, but during game one, uh, played catcher for the and first time. And that was hit over to left field. Del Toro coming in to home as she scores Tigers of Trinity strike first as Jordan Williams lines that one down the left field line Jordan Williams the senior showing her experience off right here the pitch from Stum just a nice little opposite field liner and ETBU now down one to nothing as Jordan Arce comes up to bat it's something that we knew that Trinity had to do. They had to strike first against a very, very high power team like ETBU. They managed to get uh, the shutout to start this first inning and then they strike first with the bats as well. RC usually playing the pitcher position, but she can also swing the bat very well as she takes that ball for a 1-1 count. She is incredibly fast. Lee on second, Jordan Williams on first. Stum gets the call, gets a quick glance to the wrist. That one, a bit high and inside. RC swings and fouls it off. One, two count, number 27. Trying to get number four, Carson Lee, back at home. Trinity has been a team that has scored early a lot last season and they've done it a couple times this season as well trying to continue that trend and they certainly did with that liner over in the left field by Williams those last two swings by RC look more like protection swings just trying to get the ball away from her as far as possible there RC hits that one out into deep center field it's going and it's gone oh no. Jordan RC goes yard a 3-1 three, three run home run for the Trinity Tigers as ETBU finds themselves down by four 
What an incredible hit by Jordan Arce. You could not pick a better time for the wind to shift. You can see as soon as the ball left the bat, that flag in center field immediately started going back. And you can see it right there. That one got everything. And Arce, her first career home run, you could not ask for a better spot for it to come than right now. Sydney Watson has to follow up the act somehow of Jordan Arce on tight inside and 1-0 count. Arce has always had the power in her throwing arm. I was always curious that that translated into her bat as well. And man, she rocketed that one to like nearly the deepest part of the field. Foul tip from Watson makes it a 1-1 count. Number uh 10. On Tuesday during game one, Watson was the one who got that leadoff double to ultimately set up the 2-0 victory over Howard Payne. And so we know what she can do with the bat. Let's see if it continues here in conditions that maybe are just a little bit favorable to batters right now. 1-2 count. Sydney Watson, one of the more experienced players on this Tiger roster being a junior. That one too low gets away from Glenn. 2-2 two, two count with two outs. So top line of twos. Number 10. Taking a practice swing as Watson steps back in to the batter's box. Stumps next pitch. Foul back. Marina Del Luna on deck in case she gets another chance. Watson didn't take too many swings at the plate last year, mostly a defensive player, but getting more opportunities to swing the bat this year. Mentioning, of course, De La Luna, kind of going through. Grounder over to third. Cummings, long throw across the diamond in time for the out. Cummings shows off her arm. So Trinity scores four runs in the bottom of the first. And they lead the number 16 ranked ETBU Tigers four to nothing. We'll take a break here on the Tiger Network. Don't tune out because right now something incredible may be happening. Well, the Tigers have given Bishop a fort. She just needs to hold it down now. But this ETBU batting order does not get any easier. But it will be freshman versus freshman as Haley Stum steps up to the plate for ETBU. R RC with that big three-run home run, putting the Trinity Tigers up four to nothing. Stum grounds it up the middle. Not the flashiest hit, but it gets the job done. So, first pitch, first swing, first hit for Stum. Stum, Stum, er, Stum playing a very good two-way role here for, for these ETBU Tigers. That's something that she was recruited for very well coming out of high school. Of course, had a very good pitching resume, but also, as you can see right there, very good with the bat in her hands as well. Hannah A. Kelly. Up to bat for ETBU now. Number three, sophomore out of Grapevine, Texas. Williams checking over on first. Stum certainly looking like she wants to run over to second. Next pitch from Bishop. 
Not in the zone, 2-0 count. So big moment here for the freshman pitcher going up against a nationally ranked opponent. She has the benefit of working with a nice lead, but I'm sure she doesn't want to let any runs across the board. Bishop catches the outside. 2-1 count. Hannah Kelly looking over, getting her signed for her next thing to do at the plate. That or er, er, that pitch was very close to the outside part of the zone. Heard a little bit of groans from the uh, from the ETBU supporters there. And when it popped up way in the air, but secured by Tagawa. That's a those pop ups are infinitely more dangerous with this wind. Got to drift right, left, back and forth, but for Tagawa, tracks it perfectly. Wind looks to be blowing into right field at the moment, so for the for the lefty batters especially, it could produce some pretty dangerous ones, but Brady Glenn coming up to bat now, the junior out of Houston, uh, a righty, so we'll see what she's able to do here. Wasn't able to get any hits last season, only had six at bats, was definitely much more of a defensive player than an offensive one, but we'll see what she's able to do with the bat in her hands this season. Still have Stum over at first. One out on the board, 1-0 pitch, fouled back. So count ticks up to 1-1. One, one. Mary Frances Ellis on deck for ETBU, just in case she gets another chance, as long as Glenn doesn't roll a double play ball. 1-1 one, one count, Bishop trying to go two frames, holding these ETBU Tigers scoreless. Next pitch, hit over, gets past the glove of Tagawa. Speared by RC out and right, so runner will advance to third. Stum shows off her speed, but now two runners on for ETBU. They just need a sack fly to bring Stum home as Glenn heads over to first off of the nice grounder. Bishop so far this season has not allowed a run and we're gonna get a little infield meeting here. And so while we have that little infield meeting, gonna take a quick look at Mary Francis the junior out of Waxham, Texas. Of course, batting the 9-0 spot. Uh, only missed one game last season and batted 364 during those 45 games that she played. And she's definitely no slouch whenever it comes to batting. Did have a couple of doubles, uh, 25 runs, and 36 hits on the season. Uh, and also went five for five in terms of walks and strikeouts. So definitely not going to be the easiest out for Bishop to be getting here. And on deck, Tristan Maddox. Certainly a tough two batters to go against, but an attempt does not work out all that well for Ellis. That one goes behind everybody. Oh, one count. So Bishop has the slight advantage for now. We'll see if Ellis tries to drop another quick bunt. But now the Tigers are very much ready for it. Tagawa playing very much in from a second base position. If it goes back up the middle, it will be dangerous for Trinity here. A very high risk, high reward. So Williams throws it over to third to check up on Stump. Did not throw to try and get Glenn out. Smart decision. I think a throw to second would have immediately had Stump streaking home. Either way, it's a 1-1 count. Situation just a little bit worse for Bishop with one out and runners on. Third and second, little oh. bloop is misplayed. Throw to home, it will not be in time. Throw to third, will not be in time. And they won't even throw to second. So some defensive mistakes. Baltzel could not secure the ball at short. Having to just backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Couldn't get it and then throw to home wasn't in time. Throw to third wasn't in time. And Dan Luna didn't even attempt to throw it to second. So ETBU on the board 
after a couple defensive mistakes by the Tigers. That's going to be the first error of the season tacked up not just to Balsall, but to this Trinity team as a whole, I believe. And it's just going to be a very, very rough um, time whenever you get an error that that leads to a score like that. Balsall had six errors last season, uh, second on the team in terms of that category. So it's... It's a very unfortunate situation whenever whenever you give up the first run of your career for Bishop like that. So one one count. Maddox can change the game with one swing. She'll certainly try to produce it. That one fouled. And that one ends up in the backyard of TUPD yet again. Thought it was gonna end up over in our sand volleyball courts over there, but nope. Another souvenir for TUPD. Bishop working with a one-two count, favorable pitcher count, but Maddox enough experience for that not to matter that much to her. Too high. So count goes even at two and two. Still not a very good situation for Bishop with runners on second and third. Glenn over to her right and Ellis at her back. Bishop, 2-2 two -two delivery. That one popped up and back, going off of Marby Pavilion. Yeah, I should have reached out and tried to catch it. That was my bad. That was our one chance. I had a perfect angle. All of, the, uh, all of the windows are closed due to the weather, so it would have been a very impressive grab. Or grab. You probably would have had to go through this little crack here that we've got in the window for the, uh, for the loudspeakers, but you, you could definitely get it there. Somehow, Maddox fouling that one off. Still a 2-2 two -two count. Great way to stay alive by Maddox. After her performance last season, there's a reason why Maddox is batting leadoff. She led in almost every single statistical category in terms of her bat, and definitely one of the most, if, if not the most dangerous hitters on this team. Grounder over to Baltzell. Throw to first will be in time. Tigers surrender another run, but the second out is put on the board. So now Emma Bell steps on up to the Oche. Runner on second. We will see if the Tigers can maintain a two run lead. The Tigers of Trinity, that is. Great pitch by Bishop in there for a strike. So, oh, one count for Bell. First time up, flew out over to left field. Oh, for one, that is her scorecard today. Certainly trying to make it one and two, one for two rather. That one up and in. Home plate umpire says, not a strike, that's a ball. One, one count. So two hits for ETBU have produced two runs. One one of those runs thanks to the error at short. Well, one lined foul going over on top of the Trinity Tiger dugout. So one, two count, another, another favorable count for Bishop looking for her first strikeout of the day. ETBU staying pesky at the plate. Bishop's one, two pitch delivery. Lined over into center field. Going back is Watson. And Watson secures it. Top of the second inning is done. Uh, ETBU chips away at the deficit. They score two runs thanks to a couple of Tiger defensive mistakes. We'll head to the bottom of the second with Marina De Luna, Angela Baltzel, and Hayden Del Toro do up. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network.
Welcome back to the Tiger Network, just outside of Mabry Pavilion. Marina Della Luna, the eight hole hitter, stepping up to the plate to go up against Stum. Trinity trying to extend the lead after putting up a four spot in the bottom of the first inning. We are having some talks between coach and home plate umpire, making sure everything is sorted out. And uh, we've got a new pitcher in the circle now, Avery Holland, the freshman out of Fredericksburg, Texas, another lefty here for ETBU. ETBU with a lot of lefties on the staff, actually three, which is kind of rare considering how few left-handed pitchers there are. And definitely gonna be able to see what Holland can do here. First pitch and for a strike. And ETBU returns many of their batting lineup. But on the pitching side of things, there are two workhorse pitchers graduated last season. It is a pitching staff Filled to the brim with freshmen. Big swing and a miss for De La Luna. 0-2 count, De La Luna down in a hole very early on as ETBU and Avery Holland working very nicely. Steps off. De La Luna gets a bit more time to think about what she's going to do. Of course, this is the first game of the season for ETBU. So because it isn't a conference game, because it is still very early on in this, I guess you can call it a regular season, uh, even though Stum uh, has been taken out here going into the bottom of the second, it isn't exactly, you know, worst case scenario. They're most likely just trying to figure out, you know, who's good at what, um, and also getting these younger players some early season reps before they go into quite possibly one of the most difficult uh, conferences uh, in the country in terms of at least softball strength. That one uh, popped foul, another souvenir for TUPD. I wonder if they ever count how many foul balls end up in their backyard. 2-2 two -two count still remains, De La Luna Looking for a nice hit to start things off. Did a little bit of leadoff last year at the beginning of the season. That one misses. Full count for De La Luna. She has worked an 0-2 count into a full count. Now the true payoff pitch from Holland. We'll see what they dial up here. Gives a glance to the wrist before the pitch. Up and in, so De La Luna works from an 0-2 count to getting on to first base via the walk. Great patience. De La Luna, she's gone through a little bit of a slump so far this season, I think it's safe to say, and kind of a little bit of, or kind of a, little bit of a surprise to be seeing her here in, in the eight hole spot, but she manages to use that patience, use that experience, and manages to draw a walk from, from the freshman Holland. Now Angela Baltzel, maybe looking to make up for her error at the top of the second. Tries to drop down a bunt, goes foul. Would have been a nice bunt if it stayed fair, but much to her chagrin, it goes foul. 0-1 count for Baltzel. Been hitting it very well to start her year off. Looking to put the bat to the ball and advance De La Luna. Cummings playing very much in. Up high, 1-1 one, one count, and really, ETBU returns one pitcher that saw serious time on the field, and that was Tony Tamborello, junior out of Magnolia, Texas. Haven't seen her yet today, may see her, but even her, for her, she was mostly a reliever. Next pitch, too high, 2-1 Tamborello. count. Tamborello only had 46 innings pitched, uh, and of course, as you mentioned, being much more much more of a re reliever, led the team with two saves on the season. But it is definitely a lot of rotation for this uh, for this ETBU squad uh, in terms of getting used to new faces in the circle. Two-two count, important for Baltzel. 
not to give a that one hit into the left center field. It is back and a great catch out there by Jalen Perez over the shoulder. So Baltal rockets one out into left center. But number 44 flashes the leather. Great. It, mu it is incredibly difficult to track a ball like that, especially with the wind as it is. But Perez is hyped. Out number one goes on the scoreboard as Hayden Del Toro signals that we're back at the top of the Trinity Tiger batting order. Tillman is still on first. First pitch, misses for ball one. Del Toro, of course, getting that early single to start the game off. And, you know, even with the score as it is right now, Trinity cannot afford to take their foot off the gas pedal. They really need to keep standing on it. That one hit over into left, goes foul. Gets over the shorter netting over there. Once again, once again, the wind now screaming over to our right. Flagpole trying to maintain its structural integrity. Next pitch to Del Toro. Off speed in, one, two count. Fantastic job there by Holland, able to get that pitch to just kind of drop into the zone there. It was really slow, had a lot of arc on it, but managed to get in and sets up the one two. That one too high, two two count. Still one out on the board. De Luna awaiting for someone to get her to second. Del Toro. Waits for Holland's next pitch. Swing and a miss. Holland strikes out the leadoff batter for Trinity. As we head to the two hole. Number two slot. Samantha base. Tagawa. Samantha two outs on the board. ETBU trying to swing momentum into their favor by not only scoring in the top of the second, but preventing Trinity from scoring in the bottom of the second. First pitch to Tagawa. Misses for ball one. M mentioning De La Luna over there on first, she's definitely not the biggest speed threat uh, overall on this team. That one would most likely have to go to go to Del Toro. But last season, De La Luna, four steals, five steal attempts. So definitely not the worst in terms of her base running abilities, but most likely won't be seeing her go for a steal unless uh, Coach Wittenauer feels that it would be advantageous for them to go for it here. Next pitch, sharp liner foul over to left. Very strong liner for Tagawa. And now one, two count. Tiger stole seven bases in that second game against Howard Payne. We haven't seen Trinity steal that many bases in quite a long time, at least a decade. So certainly a Tiger team that wants to be more aggressive on the base pass, but right now being a bit more conservative. Off-speed pitch misses. 2-2 two -two count with two outs in the second inning where ETBU scored two. So two's flying everywhere right now. As number 17, Avery Holland, gives the 2-2 two -two delivery. 3-2 three -two count goes 3-2. Forcing some long at-bats. Trinity trying to stay as patient as possible. We'll see if Tagawa can draw a walk. Full count pitch. Hit over into right field. It is caught by Bell. Little sharp liner. Bell doesn't have to move far to get it. Bottom of the second comes and goes for Trinity. They strand Del Luna at first. Great job by Holland to hold down the fort for ETBU. No more damage. We head over to the top of the third where Courtney White, Delaney Loya, and Torin Cummings will be due up for ETBU. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network.
Second base for number 24. Courtney Bishop White Long. drew a walk in her first appearance at the plate. Bishop gets the call to work the third inning as well. We'll see how the freshman handles a slimmer lead. Puts that one in there for a strike. So Courtney White goes down to an 0-1 count as Bishop remains aggressive. Something interesting uh, that just kind of popped into my mind here whenever you mentioned the slimmer lead, Bishop has never pitched um, without a lead. Uh, of course, her very first uh, inning, uh, both both today and also on Tuesday, came or er, er, came in in the top of the first. But then after that, Trinity managed to get a one nothing lead whenever whenever we played Howard Payne during that second game. But then also managed to uh, obviously start out with the 4-0 lead during the second. So. Just a little bit of a trend note here. Bishop never playing from behind, so to speak. One, two count. Bishop got a nice ball in the zone for a strike. A little check swing goes foul. Still one, two count for Courtney White. This is an ETBU team that last year had a team ERA of 1.76 and a team batting average of 345. So dangerous on both fronts. They are nationally ranked for a reason, and they certainly don't want their opening game spoiled by Trinity. Poked out into left field, but goes foul. So White staying patient, fouling off whatever she can to stay alive. White, last season, once she got on base, she was a really big threat. 32 stolen bases off of 33 attempts led the team in both of those categories and was also a very patient batter in terms of managing to draw out lo long counts and get walks. She had extends the count out a little bit longer by taking that ball. She had 23 walks last season, tied for the highest on the team in 2023. 2-2 two -two pitch from Bishop. Swing and a miss. Strike three on uh, the swing. Courtney White goes down on strikes. So one out on the board as Bishop collects her first strikeout. A fantastic job right there. And Bishop doing a lot of what we saw on Tuesday, just managing to get batters, not really in terms of getting them to catch them looking, but in terms of getting them to chase in order to draw swings and misses. It's something that she is very, very good at, and getting getting her first strikeout here will potentially allow her to kind of pick up the momentum a little bit and get back into the rhythm that we got so used to on Tuesday. 1-0 count for Delaney Loya. Loya flew out to right and her first AB. Second pitch, no strike says the home plate umpire, so 2-0 count. One out on the board, much earlier than the past two innings for Bishop. Getting that leadoff batter out. Now working against Loya. The junior takes a swing at it, hits it out into right center. It will get down and bounce off the wall. Watson throws it in, but a double for Delaney Loya. Rockets one out in to right center field, hitting off of the Tigers part of the wall. Shows off her strength. That one looked incredibly dangerous off the bat. The wind kind of died out a little bit at the top of the arc, allowed that ball to stay within the park there, but a fantastic play right there by Loya. It's, it's something that she did a lot last season, 17 doubles on the year and she manages to pick up her first right here in her 2024 campaign. Torin Cummings, five hole hitter, flew out in foul territory to RC last time over in right field. And that one, bit of a can of corn out in center. Watson collects it, runners can't advance. So two outs with a runner at Bishop's back brings up Stum. 
Not pitching anymore, but still swinging the stick. Now batting, designated player number eight, Haley Stum. Designated player now, Haley Stum. One of the freshmen on the squad for ETVU. Pitch from Bishop. Lined over into right center field. That one's going to get through the gap. ETVU will score another run as Loya comes in to score. It is three to four. A little celebration from Stum. She makes up for one of the runs that she gave up. And now lineup continues on to number three, Hannah A. Kelly. So far this season, Bishop has done very good at limiting players getting on base. And when poked out right field, shallow, Tagawa makes the catch. Only one run surrendered in the top of the third, but still, ETBU encroaching on the Tigers' lead. It is four to three. We head to the bottom of the third with Hannah Boudreaux, Carson Lee, and Jordan Williams do up. Take a break on the Tiger Network as we head to the bottom of the third frame. Holland back out in the circle. And Hannah Boudreau up to bat. Boudreau grounded out over to Tristan Maddox over at shortstop in her first AB. Tigers getting out hit four to three. Trying to put some more threats on the board. Pitch goes. That one outside for a ball. The music playing, if this were the SCAC tournament for baseball, they'd call that play off. ETBU looking to shut down Trinity for two innings in a row. Liner over into right field, goes foul. Could have been dangerous if it stayed fair. But no dice there. Still, Coach Shirley for ETBU in her 16th season with the Tigers of East Texas Baptist. They've seen a lot of success in her tenure. That one outside for a ball. And a team with a baker's dozen worth of freshmen this year. So certainly a lot of youth to look forward to if you are an ETBU fan. Next pitch. Little jammer over into shallow, shallow right, basically on the line between the infield and the outfield. But either way, Courtney White secures it, one out in the inning. M mentioning the youth on both of these teams, it's something that, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of last year. Obviously, uh, a few of the big freshman names that stood out, of course, Jordan R.C., Hayden Del Toro, Carson Lee. But this is a very, very strong freshman class for both of these schools. Uh, both of these freshman classes are very competitive. They're really buying into the program. And it's something that both of these coaches talked about during our meetings with them th throughout the week. Carson Lee up to bat. Clean up hitter working with nobody on base. Pokes it out into right field, but foul. Wind has died down just a little bit. Certainly not as strong as it was a little earlier. And as I say that, the gust of wind 
Irons out the flag over to right yet again. So you can't you can't predict the weather. It's the reason why meteorologists have about a 33% accuracy rate. But hey, that'll get you into the Hall of Fame for baseball if you're hitting 333. It's a uh, it's a very typical Texas February, I'd say, because we had. What was it on Tuesday? It was mid 70s, maybe m maybe high 60s. No wind, perfectly clear skies, and then you know four or five days later, it's cloudy, windy. Everybody's bundled up in blankets. It's you can never really predict it around here. That pitch misses, quite to the shock of ETBU. It is a 3-1 count for Lee. Lee certainly has the power to leave the park. It's just I will not acknowledge the peanut gallery next to me. <laughs> Lee draws the walk. <laughs> and now over to first base. I'm not acknowledging it because they thought of a better pun than I did. No. I don't know. I'd say that it was about on quality with some of the puns that you've had so far whenever we've been working together. One of the ones in particular that I remember actually came from earlier today whenever you said uh, one of the lines from Frozen, I think it was, during the open. That's just clever wordplay. Lee and leave. As Jordan Williams hits it out into left field, quick out for Williams, first pitch. First swing, first contact with the ball. Mary Francis Ellis collects it and throws it out. So back to Jordan Arce, who hit that three-run homer out into center field now working with Lee on first big swing such a strong hit but goes foul certainly at the right angle to leave the park for the uh, for the final broadcast uh, of our uh, or uh, of our tiger network careers we need to we need to do nothing but dad jokes and bad puns RC. So we take a little bit of a break. Changing for a new ball. So uh, Holland, next pitch. That one misses. RC staying patient. Understandably, ATBU I'm sure doesn't want to pitch her too aggressively after her last at bat. Mentioning the weather real quick, the sun has started to peek through the clouds a little bit, so it is starting to brighten up. Now deep hit out into right center field. It's gone! Back to back home runs for Jordan RC. Wow! Six to three. Jordan RC just putting the team on her back right now. Jordan Narcy, we know her for her pitching ability, but what a fantastic offensive performance she's showing here today. Whenever she gets to whenever she gets to wear the helmet, she's normally playing a lot more of a base running role, but right now she is sending the ball well past the wall. Two for two on the day, and both of them resulting in multiple run homers. Defensive change for ETBU. Haley Stum out in left field now. Next pitch to Sydney Watson. Watson fouls it back, 0-1. Jordan RC. two home runs in a game. Has not happened that often for Trinity in their program's history. Joins a pretty exclusive list, if I'm remembering correctly. Now... Next pitch to Watson, the delivery. Off speed, not in the zone. Watson does well to take account of that off speed pitch, brings it to a 1 1 count. Just looking at home runs in a game, she joins the list with Marina De La Luna. Only three players have ever done that. Tip into the glove, 1 2 count. Watson. Trying to once again follow up the act that RC had before. But unfair. Next pitch for Holland. Misses. 
So two two count with two outs on the board. And that's re that's really the real bummer for Holland is that you give up that home run with two outs. You always want to try and get out of the inning, and she came so, so close to doing it. And Watson caught looking there. So, end of the third, but damage done. Tigers of Trinity extend the lead out to three. Go to the top of the fourth. Brady Glenn, and Mary Frances Ellis, and Tristan Maddox do up for ETBU. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network. It is a good one. Brady Glenn comes to the dish now. Had a single in the second inning, trying to continue her one for one day by making it two for two. Bishop's pitch. And the turf, 1 0 count. Right now, the only two batters that Bishop hasn't retired have been Stum and Glenn. Everyone else has been victim to either a ground ball or a strikeout. Bishop's pitch, lined over into right center field, gets into the gap, bounces off the wall. Throw to second, too late. So leadoff double for Brady Glenn as the doubles keep on piling up for ETBU. This one a leadoff double, no outs on the board. Some banter between Mary Frances Ellis and Brady Glenn. They are certainly excited with those leadoff doubles. Glenn, the junior out of Houston, Texas, had a pretty rough season offensively, didn't get a ton of looks with the bat in her hand as we're getting what appears to be a substitution. Looks like Isabella Morales is going to be the pinch runner here. Uh, it is still gonna be Mary Frances Ellis who will be swinging the bat, but it will be Morales coming in as a pinch runner here for Glenn. Freshman on second. Meanwhile, the junior at the plate trying to bring in her younger teammate. Tiger infield playing in. First pitch. Williams pops up to make sure that pinch runner does not get any ideas. First pitch misses for ball one. Ellis is very fast in her own right. So you gotta be careful with her. Certainly don't want her getting onto the base pants as well. The pitch. But attempt does not go. Wrong angle, one, one count. As number 14 heads back over to second base. Morales. Really wants to get over to third. The freshman in her senior season last year as a high school had a 483 batting average. So definitely is good with the bat, but One misses inside the another ball. The coaching staff most likely electing to just see how she does uh, running the bases at the moment and we'll likely see her be getting some looks later on in the season. Next pitch to Ellis. Little dribbler gets over the glove of Baltzel. Quick throw in. 
So base hit, almost snagged out of the air by Valtzel, but instead runners at the corners with no outs on the board. A danger situation for the freshman pitcher. Although, talking to the home plate umpire, we'll see if we have a change. Meeting at the circle with no outs on the board. Certainly a favorable situation for ETVU. They've been playing from behind most of this game. And it looks like we are going to get that substitution. Now coming in uh, to pitch for Trinity, number 14, Josephine Kolawine, freshman out of Reno, Nevada. Started game two against Concordia. Was doing well until really one inning led up seven runs. But she does have the tools at her disposal to keep ETBU to no runs. We'll let her warm up. We'll take a break on the Tiger Network and come back when she's ready. Both teams have now gone to their bullpen. Cola wine tasked with keeping these runners from coming home. Tristan Maddox, certainly an intimidating start for Cola wine going up against what is likely someone who is likely one of, if not the best hitter on this ETBU team. First pitch in there for a strike. So all one count, but changing the perspective for these ETBU hitters as they go from facing a lefty to facing a righty. Maddox looking for hit number one on this new season, hit by uh, the pitch in the first, grounded out in the second, had an RBI off the ground out. Cole Lyons, next pitch, throw over to second. Cut off a bye to Gawa. Yeah, we're not going to get Ellis at second. Didn't want Morales coming home. No outs on the board still, and bad situation. Runners on second and third with no outs. 1-1 one, one count. Last pitch missed. Colomine's pitch. In there for a strike. Good precision from Colomine. As Maddox working on an awkward count, one and two. Player, runner behind and to the right of Colawine. Her one, two pitch to Maddox. Fouls it off herself. So this at bat will continue for another pitch. Maddox last season led the team not only in terms of uh, plate appearances, she had 153 at-bats, but also in terms of runs with 51 and hits with 65. So a very dangerous spot for, for a call of wine to be in. Lined over in to right center field. It gets into the alley. Two runs come in to score in the forms of Morales and Ellis. ETBU only down by one as Maddox gets that oh-so-desired first hit of the season. Coming in clutch in that first hitting spot. The senior reels her team to within one of the Trinity Tigers. Emma Bell, two hole hitter, going from senior to freshman, 0 for 2 today. Drops a bunt, throw to first, 
does what she needs to. Tying run on third with one out. Just needs a sack fly from Courtney White. And she certainly has the power to do that. And so now we're going to see Courtney White coming up to bat in the three-hole spot. We've already seen her a couple of times so far today. Had a 4.16 batting average last season, and definitely one of, or, or and definitely another very big threat to Callawine here. She's kind of going to be going through a gauntlet here. One, or 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 going to be going through an early gauntlet here during this relief appearance. 2-0 count. Still working with one out on the board. ETB has been very efficient. They've piled on seven hits against the Tiger pitching staff today of Trinity. That one's not in there. 3-0 count. We'll see if they put her on first base to get a bit more force out opportunities for Colawine. Takes a glance at the wrist. Josephine's next pitch. Misses, so White heads over to first. Didn't look like they were really trying to aggressively attack the zone against her. And no meeting at the circle. Perhaps that was planned, but Delaney Loya, cleanup hitter, Working with those runners on the corners. One out on the board. Tigers may be looking for a double play. Tigers of Trinity, that is. Loya last season did have 35 RBIs, so she'll be hoping to get some here as well. Runner takes off to second. No throw. Kind of a little bit of confusion there. White kind of stopped up as if she was going to go back to first with about, I'd say, probably a solid 15 feet to go before she hit the second base back. Uh, not entirely sure why she didn't just leg it out there, but Williams opted not to throw it there. Swing and a miss. Yeah, White really trying to bait the throw from Williams. Williams not biting, though. Too much experience under her belt and too much just experience from last year especially. A lot of trickery from Tiger opponents on the base paths, Trinity Tiger opponents. Potentially trying to draw an errant throw that would then allow Maddox to come in to score and tie this one up. One, two count. And now we're gonna get a batting timeout as Loya is gonna talk with, with the third base coach, try and Get some advice on what to do here, maybe what to swing at, what not to swing at. Colawine trying to get the second out on the board would be a great boost to her if she can. One, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Man, and Loya, bit of a half-hearted swing there. Two outs now. Sorely needed for Colawine. But Torrin Cummings coming up now. Another batter hitting 0 for 2 today, looking for their first hit on the season. And Cummings again mentioned her performances last season. And she will be looking for perhaps a little bit better this season. Of course, did lead the team in terms of triples. Had a had a 362 average, which Definitely as far from the worst that you can ask for. And the senior out of Houston, Texas, will be called on a lot so far this season, I imagine, for for these ETBU Tigers with a grounder up the middle. Tying run crosses. Go ahead, run. Throw not in time. And no throw to second. So two RBI for Cummings. ETBU takes the lead 7-6. to six as they put up a four spot in the top of the fourth. And the Trinity Tiger lead has completely evaporated. They are playing it down now. Haley Stum, two for two today, trying to make it three for three for her collegiate opener. And something to note, uh, 
obviously game two last time that these two teams played was or was the big blowout a 13 nothing victory for ETBU in which uh, the uh, the Tigers from Marshall scored 12 in the bottom of the first but during game number one which they did win 11 to one ETBU scored at least one run in every single inning during that game in fact scored multiple runs in every single inning of that game and so it's something that has not really translated here today obviously they were scoreless during the top of the first but ever since then they have scored multiple runs sharp liner to De La Luna picks it off and that will end uh, the top of the fourth we head to the bottom of the fourth. Marina De La Luna, Angela Baltzel, and Hayden Del Toro do up for Trinity. They are playing from behind now, looking to take back the lead. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network to see if they do. Marina De La Luna, eight hole hitter. Drew will walk in her first plate appearance. But now, looking to get on base yet again. She got on base, but couldn't advance as the next three Tigers went down. We'll see how she handles Holland. First pitch to De La Luna. Misses for ball one. So not going to go down to an 0-2 count very fast for De Luna this time around as she takes the first pitch for a ball. Not sure if you can hear it from up here with the windows closed, but this is a team that absolutely loves Marina De La Luna. You can hear, or, or, um, I could hear the, uh, the um, Marina chants coming from our spot up here, even with all the windows closed due to the weather. It is... Er, er, De La Luna is a senior that is very much loved on this team. Next pitch. Misses. 2-1 count for De La Luna. Staying patient against Holland. Re Holland. Only damage that she's given up was that two-run shot from RC. She's collected two strikeouts against these Trinity Tigers, but has also allowed two walks. De La Luna lines that one out into right field, right to Bell. Collects it easily. So De La Luna retired to start off the bottom of the fourth for Trinity. Brings up Angela Baltzel. Baltzel trying uh, to make a better day for herself. Flew out to left to center field rather. Last time up. That one, a big pop-up over into left field. And like, no, Stradamus, my mistake comes to fruition. <laughs> over into left field, she flies out. So two outs on the board for Trinity. Hayden Del Toro, leadoff batter, comes up. Top of the order, left field like, no Stradamus, that's a new one. I don't think I've ever heard that one on a broadcast before. Right. <laughs> we already have the broadcaster's <laughs> curse. <laughs> I, need to bring, I need to flavor it up a little bit. First pitch to Del Toro in there for a strike. Beautiful off-speed work there by or, or by Holland. We saw it during uh, during the second and also a little bit during the third, but that was one of the best pitches I think that I've seen out of this freshman so far today. Holland's next pitch finds the zone for strike two. So Del Toro down 0-2 very quickly. Struck out last time. Try not to strike out again. Holland's 1-2 pitch. Does not catch the zone this time. It's Del Toro, good eye for her 1-2 count. 
The TBU getting ready yet again for the Speedy Del Toro. Grounds it over to Maddox. Throw in time. Maddox has got a rocket for an arm. She throws out Del Toro at first. That ends the fourth inning very quickly for Trinity. Go back to the top of the fifth. And A. Kelly, Brady Glenn, and Mary Frances Ellis do up for ETBU. We'll take a break on the Tiger Network as Colawine will attempt to hold ETBU to no runs in the top of the fifth. Hannah Kelly, 0 for 2 today, two pop-ups. Trying to get her first hit on the season, the sophomore works against Colawine. Tigers playing up ahead, Tigers of ETBU. Meanwhile, San Antonio Tigers really wanting to shut down ETBU in the top of the fifth. Only score time they've held them scoreless was in the top of the first. Colawine. Oh, one pitch. In there for a strike. So Kelly in a hole. Oh, two. We'll see how the sophomore works her way out of this one. Colawine gets the signal. Next pitch. Tries to go low, but a bit too low. One, two count. Kelly stays patient. Shows how disciplined this ETBU batting order is. A lesser team may have swung at that. Next pitch. In there for strike three. So good job by Colawine catching Kelly looking. Head to Brady Glenn. Two for two today. Colawine. Now has an out on the board to work with much sooner than she did when she came in. Now Glenn has had a great day so far. Single and a double. First pitch taken for a strike. So right now Colmine just really attacking the zone. That uh the uh the strikeout looked a little bit inside here from our from our center field camera, but it kind of displayed some of the strengths that that uh, Colawine has whenever uh, we got to talk to her, not before this game, but before the Howard Payne game. Coach Whitnauer mentioning that Colawine has very, very good off-speed stuff, very good breaking ball uh, throwing. Next pitch, misses the zone. 2-1 count for Glenn as Trinity pitching very carefully to Glenn, already two for two today. She's coming around to score one time. Three one count. This game going on as we have games going on over on the tennis courts as the men and women play Harden Simmons. Men's tennis had a great match against Concordia. Count goes full as Colawine puts the ball in the strike zone. Glenn. And, uh, and also, speaking of Harden Simmons, that is who uh, Trinity Softball will be playing next week as well. Swing dropped third 
strike, but I think they're going to say got a piece of it there. Empire heads over. So I'm going to. So think that uh think that either Glenn or the ball might have caught a piece there of Jordan Williams's helmet. So we're getting an official's timeout, I believe, just to make sure that Williams is okay. You know, you never want to take a risk whenever it comes to head injuries. And whenever you've got either an aluminum bat or a uh, or a pretty well-thrown softball going right into the forehead, it can be a little bit of a risk. So just wanting to make sure there that Williams is, of course, okay. She got up smiling, you know, nodding, talking with the training staff that was sent out. So a very short official's timeout there, but one that was necessary nonetheless. They induced the swing from Glenn, but no strikeout just yet. On the inside, walk is drawn from Glenn. So back on first base, Glenn has made it her choice to stay at first as much as possible. Mary Frances Ellis coming up to bat, one for two. Singled in the fourth, reached thanks to an error in the second. One out on the board, lays down the bunt. Very nice bunt, Coleman's throw to first, not in time. So infield hit for Mary Frances Ellis, really showing off her speed. Great bunt, and then the throw over to first. Yeah, not in time. Tigers of Trinity can't catch Ellis, and now runners on first and second. Tristan Maddox coming up to bat. She can put this one out of hand with just a swing. She's got a ton of power in that bat, led the team with nine home runs last season alone, and 46 of the numerous runs that this ETBU team had last season were batted in by her. First pitch outside, ball one. Maddox, first hit, drove in a run. Also got an RBI in the second, so good day for Maddox so far. One for two. And that one over into left field. We'll see if they send the runner. They will not, so. Bases are juiced for the ETBU Tigers. It was a nice hit, but a bit too fast, getting to Del Toro very quick over and left. But still, very dangerous position for Colorwine to be in. Runners on every base, one out, but you have the force out everywhere. Emma Bell certainly can't bunt it We'll see what ETBU does. First pitch misses, ball one, and the last thing you want to do is walk in a run. Bell, of course, the freshman, mentioning some of her high school statistics earlier, but a four-way athlete uh, over in Eustis, Texas, and definitely a speed threat as well once she gets on the bag. Grounded, throw the home is in time. Trinity plays it smart. Botzel with the quick throw to home. That retires Glenn. She heads back to the dugout. Two outs on the board with bases loaded. Trinity looking for a play just like that one. As Courtney White, 0 for 1 today, tries to do some more damage. First pitch outside. 1-0 count again. The senior, Courtney White. High praise from Coach Shirley along with Maddox, not just for their offensive capabilities, for, but for their defensive ones as well. Takes that for a strike. 1-1 one, one count for the three-hole hitter. She's drawn two walks and struck out. White, of course, coming in as a transfer, but whenever we got to talk with Coach Shirley, nothing but complimentary of 
both Maddox and White, uh, both of them, of course, seniors, both of them coming out of the Texas area and just they are incredibly similar, not just in terms of their skills, but also in terms of personalities and abilities. Very solid uh, defensive or defense, defensive abilities as well. Ball gets away from Williams, but no advances from ETBU. 3-1 count. It is very dangerous now, walking a tightrope. Courtney White just staying so, so patently patient. Colaline, 3 1 pitch. And deuces the swing. Toss over to first. And ETBU strands runners on every base. So no runs for ETBU in the top of the fifth, even though it seemed like they were destined to score almost. We head to the bottom of the fifth with Samantha Tagawa, Hannah Boudreaux, and Carson Lee up to bat for the Trinity Tigers. It is seven to six in favor of ETBU. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network. Back in San Antonio, Avery Holland, another inning of work designated to her. She's pitched three innings so far, now pitching in the bottom of the fifth. And uh, Samantha Tagawa, freshman, 0 for 2 so far. Ground out to shortstop and a line out over to right field has been her scorecard today. Takes the first pitch for a ball. And this is really the part of the order you want to start heating up because Tagawa is over for 2. Boudreaux, who is on deck, is over for 2. And Carson Lee, who's in the hole, hasn't actually had an at-bat so far today. 1-1 one, one count, but really wanting to get the lineup over to Jordan Arcee as fast as possible, it seems, with how she's hitting the ball. Well, I mean, getting the or, or getting the bat over to RC would be critical, but also getting runners on base because big swing over into left field. Great catch by Haley Stum. Certainly tricky with the footwork, but a strong hit from Tagawa will end up as a lineout over to spot. the left field, having and to go all the way to the warning the track to snag that one out of the air. Now, Hannah Boudreau. She has grounded out to the shortstop and popped out over to second base. Working with one out on the board. First pitch, off speed, ball one. Can't get it in the zone, but Boudreaux trying to go one for three. Certainly don't want to be held hitless. But some great hitting from ETBU. Ten hits today. Next pitch. And there for a strike. 1-1 one, one count. And even though ETBU is hitting 400 as a team today, and Trinity is hitting 235, Trinity only down by one. You can get as many hits as you want, but if you can't score them, you don't really mean that much. That one, aligned in the right field, gets past the first baseman, Boudreaux. Gets first hit of the day, getting it past Delaney Laura, Loya rather. And now Carson Lee, no at bats today, but working with something she hasn't been able to work with, a runner on first. Lee so far today has had a, you know, um, obviously no at bats, has walked twice as we're gonna get a pinch runner here, Boudreaux is gonna come out and in comes Ella Whitaker. We saw her get a few pinch running uh, appearances last or, or last Tuesday as well. 
and she's appeared in three of Trinity's four games so far this season. And we'll see what she can do from, from the base pass here. First pitch to Lee. Misses for ball one. Lee has walked twice today, trying to go for three walks in a row. If three strikeouts in a row is a hat trick, I think three walks in a row is a pedestrian. I like that one, a pedestrian, that's pretty good. Next pitch to Lee. Swings, no pedestrian for her, one, two. And Tigers get retired in the bottom of the fifth off of the double play. Good defensive effort there. Strong grounder to Maddox, flipping it over to White, and then putting out Lee over at first. So we go to the sixth inning. ETBU still up seven to six. Delaney, Loya, Torin Cummings, and Haley Stum do up for ETBU. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network for the top of the sixth frame. Delaney Loya, one for three today, flew out to right in the first, doubled in the third, struck out in the fourth. Going up against Colawine. Colawine has given up two earned runs today, struck out two batters, and has issued two walks. First pitch, hit all the way to Deluna. Bobbles it, throw over the diamond, gets it in time! Marina De La Luna gave uh, Loya all the time in the world, but somehow getting an out, out of the clutches of an error. You know, it looked like Loya kind of wasn't going 100% there. I think, or I don't think that she was expecting the bobble there by De La Luna, and it was an issue for De La Luna last year in terms of giving up errors. She had 10 errors last season from, from her spot at shortstop and, and third base. And I don't think that Loyal was really expecting that there. If she had run it out, I definitely think that she would have gotten it. But instead, De La Luna with the great recovery and Carson Lee with a fantastic stretch out there to be able to get that one in time. Lined over to Tagawa. Tagawa. Snacks it out of the air. Two quick outs for Colawine in the top of the sixth. Six, Brings up Haley, Haley Stum. Stum, the freshman, going up against another fellow freshman. Tiger versus Tiger. Freshman versus freshman. Pitcher for someone who also pitches. <laughs> Fouls it off. Colawine uh, so far this game has, you know, obviously allowed the base loaded situation, but even with the pressure on, she seems to be very cool, very calm, very collected. And the, the freshman out of Reno, Nevada, doing a pretty good job of keeping it under control so far. And speaking of under control, the conditions here have definitely evened out a little bit. You can see the, uh, the flag in center field has well, as soon as I say that, it starts billowing a little bit, but it was pretty limp there for a couple of seconds. Next pitch. Misses. 2-1 count for Stum. Two for three today. Singled in the second. Doubled in the third to bring in a run. Lined out in the fourth. 
over to De La Luna over at third. 2-1 pitch for Colawine. Gets away from Williams, ball too low. 3-1 count, batters count. Gotta be careful here. Of course, Hannah Kelly on deck for ETBU if she gets the chance to step up to the plate. Fouls that one off, 3-2 count. Count is juiced. Looking to keep ETBU scoreless for two straight frames is Colawine. Trinity only down by a run. Certainly trying to keep it that way, give themselves a fighting chance. Colawine's pitch. Poked over to the right, more of a stay alive swing from Stum. Trinity. Last time they beat a ranked opponent was TLU in last year's SCAC tournament that was held at Trinity. They shut out TLU one to nothing thanks to the pitching efforts of Jordan RC. Now RC having an impact in this game with her bat instead. That one lined over near center field. Diving play by Watson cannot be made. So going to second will be Stum and the freshman having a great collegiate opener. Three for four, two doubles and a single. She hands the baton over to Kelly, who is looking for her first hit on the season. And don't forget the one RBI as well for Stum. She has been incredibly impressive during this debut as now we're getting a little bit of a discussion here at, or at kind of midway between home and third. I believe that we are seeing a change here in the number seven slot. Number 29 is coming in. That's going to be Elizabeth Watkins, the sophomore out of Lindale, Texas. Played in eight games last season. Had a 222 average and did have two hits to her name on nine at-bats. Also went one for one in terms of walks and strikeouts. So going to be getting a little bit different looks here and that's kind of one of the luxuries that ETBU is able to afford with of course a very large roster and this being their opening day kind of giving people some looks that they maybe wouldn't be able to get later on in the season just seeing what they can do. First pitch misses for ball one and ETBU thinks that Watkins gives, gives them the better chance to get Stum in from home. Getting a fresh look at Colawine. 1 0 delivery from Josephine. Misses for ball two, so some trouble locating the zone for Colawine right now after getting two quick outs. Now down in a 2 0 count. Looking for the zone. Watkins doing very well in her pinch hitter role. Too far inside, 3-0 count. See if they defer to just put her on first to get some more force out opportunities. Because right now, it will be quite a fight to get Watkins to strike out. See if they can induce a swing. This pitch. Misses. And Watkins didn't think that it missed, but it did, said the home plate umpire. So. Runners on first and second. Force outs everywhere but home. Meeting in the circle going to happen now. Just a defensive meeting. No coach heading out there. He's talking to the freshman pitcher. Calm things down. Still have two outs on the board. Just need to tag any of the bases. And now we're getting a pinch runner. So Hannah A. Kelly, who was supposed to be batting in that seven slot, has now come in as a pinch runner, uh, replacing Watkins. So kind of an interesting movement here, just trying to go around. And Hannah A. Kelly, just looking at the stats, there's a good reason why she has been subbed in 16 stolen bases last season. She can definitely, or, or she can definitely use her feet and, uh, and get some extra wheels there on the base paths. 
Brady Glenn. Certainly not the one you want to see at home plate right now. If you are Trinity, two for two today. Gets it in for a strike. 1-1 one, one count. Glenn singled in the second, doubled in the fourth, and it drew a walk in the fifth. Trying to put a run on the board and extend the ETBU lead. Next pitch. Lined into right field. We'll see if they send the runner. They do not. But the ball gets away. And now runners stay. Bases are juiced. Bit fortunate for Trinity that they did not send Stum home. Because if they did, they would have certainly scored her. But no way to see that. Williams wasn't going to be able to get the throw in from right field. So now force outs everywhere for Trinity with Mary Frances Ellis, who is more of a speed threat rather than a power threat. She has run out a grounder already. But when bases are loaded, those weak slap hitters have to change their strategy a little bit. Still getting some talk here. And now there is going to be another substitution here. Ava Rodriguez, freshman out of Bernie, Texas, well, coming up. Slot. Rodriguez is, er, is also one of those two-way players for ETBU. Actually, actually, a lot of two-way players on this staff. And the freshman listed as both a right-handed pitcher and a utility player. So... They're going to send Rodriguez up and see if she can poke something in the outfield and bring in another run. First pitch. And there for a strike. So all one count given to Rodriguez. Looking to get Maddox up to the plate. She is on deck right now. Next pitch. Misses. One one count. Colline has gotten out of a bases loaded jam in the last inning with no damage done. Can she do it here? Trying to turn the freshman into a pressure cooker. Next pitch from Colline. Can't find the zone again, a 2-1 count. And of course, trying to avoid that cardinal sin of walking in a run. Two and one, very, very big pitch coming up right here. The delivery. Off speed, can't find the zone. Three, one count. Batter's count for Rodriguez. She is certainly in the driver's seat in this at bat. Bases loaded. All the pressure on Colawine. Three, one pitch. Can't catch the zone, and Colline walks in a run. And now things become uh, even more dangerous with Tristan Maddox stepping up to the dish. Pinch running for Rodriguez will be Mary Frances Ellis. Has the speed over Rodriguez. And now meeting at the circle. Colline could not track the zone. Now Trandy finds themselves down by two. As Mary Francis Ellis, number five, on first base for the pinch run. Pinch runner, number Coaches five. out there for the circle meeting here. I did see some movement in the bullpen earlier, but it doesn't look like they're moving to make a pitching change at the moment for the Trinity Tigers. And looks like Colbon will still be there in the circle. The order, shortstop number still two outs on the board for Colawine. Just need Matt to induce Maddox into a ground ball. Force outs at every base for Trinity. First pitch. In there for a strike. So perhaps the pep talk worked. Oh, one count. Maddox hit by a pitch in the first, grounded out in the second, doubled in the fourth, and singled in the fifth. 
Next delivery. Not getting that location there. 1-1 one, one count. ETBU now 12 hits, eight runs have come across. They have extended their lead to two runs. Fortunately, for Colowine, unable to keep them scoreless for two frames in a row. Williams tried to frame it there on the last couple, just couldn't get it to go there. The umpire just, just doing a very good job of tracking that ball in. And now, once again, Colowine finds herself in a 2-1 count. Next delivery. And another run will come in as Maddox gets hit by the pitch for a second time this game. Nine to six now, ETPU working off of Colowine's mistakes as they have not needed to connect the bat to the ball to put these runs across. Definitely not intentional, I don't think, for Maddox to have gotten hit on both of those, but it is still kind of, you know, it's not the best look, especially considering uh, her batting ability. We know that it isn't intentional, but in rivalries like this, it could feel like it is. Now we're going to be getting a pitching substitution. Uh, Megan Krishbaum coming in. Uh, the, uh, the described fireball pitcher by Coach Wittenauer. Haven't seen her so far this season as she's been nursing a foot injury that she picked up over the fall, but... She's going to be getting her first appearance here during this one here in the bottom of, or sorry, top of the sixth, just trying to close one out without any additional damage. We'll take a break on the Tiger Network as Krishbaum gets warmed up. Emma Bell, freshman, still looking for her first hit of the season. 0 for 3 today. Fly out, fly out, sacrifice, and then a fielder's choice. Base is loaded for her, so if she gets a hit, it will score a run. First pitch from Kishbaum, zooms it past, but not in the zone. 1-0 count to start off Bell. Once again, very young pitching staff for Trinity, just like ETBU. Next pitch, gets it in for a strike. 1-1 one, one count for Bell. Francis at Krishwam's back. Glenn over to her right and Maddox over to her left. Every runner very fast for ETBU. Can't find the accuracy there. 2 1 count to Bell now. Good velocity there by Krishbaum. And it's something that we heard a lot about Krishbaum being one of the essentially power throwers here on this team. Next pitch gets the grounder and just past Baltzel. They're going to send the runner home and throw not in time. So two runs are going to score as Glenn and Ellis come around the plate. 11 to 6. Uh, ETBU up by 5 now. Passes the baton over to Courtney White as all this damage that has been done in the top of the 6 has come with two outs on the board. Trinity just looking for that final out. They just need to get one, and they've been so close. have gotten to 
you know, two strike counts a couple of times, but just haven't been able to close it out. And, you know, that final strike, those final couple of strikes, you know, had a couple of walks, had a hit by pitch on a 3-1, and it's just, it's felt like no matter what this Trinity team has been able to, or, or, or has tried, they just haven't been able to get that final out. But Chris Baum gonna be doing her best here, starting out strong with the 0-1. Grounded over to De La Luna. Little bobble, but De La Luna far too strong. Throws out White over at first, despite the bobble. Damage done. Another four spot for ETBU in the top of the six. Puts Trinity down by five. Limited chances for the Tigers of Trinity to come back in this one. Do up for Trinity in the bottom of the six. Jordan Williams, Jordan RC, and Sydney Watson will take a break on the Tiger Network as we head to the bottom of the six. And now Jordan Williams will start us off in the bottom of the sixth. Williams went for two today. Single in the first, flew out in the third. The dynamic duo of Jordan and Jordan here in the five and six hole spots of the lineup. First pitch in there for a strike. And now working down 0-1. Williams never too flustered by any count, has run plenty of walks in her career from undesirable situations. That pitch no good there. One one count. Every Holland in there for her fifth inning of work now. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Still only giving up a home run to Jordan Arce who is on deck right now. 2-1 count. Williams stays ever patient. Looking for that 40th walk in her career. The senior takes that one for a strike. Holland able to catch the corner. 2-2 two -two count as it goes even. Once again, Always a game of chess for Williams when she steps up to the plate. Gets that one out over to left field. It drops down. So leadoff hit for Jordan Williams. She gets it over just in front of Haley Stum over in left field. On this replay here, you're going to see Williams chokes up on the bat a little bit, gets her hands a bit higher, doesn't get as much power as you would if the hands were a little bit lower, but but it allowed her to get that bat around a lot quicker, it got contact on it, and just poked it over the heads of, of Cummings and Maddox. RC swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. Two home runs for RC on the day, mounting to a five RBI. It's been obviously a great day for her. Five with that five RBI day and two home runs. Check swing it does not go, so a 1-1 one, one count. Two home runs. Only three other players have ever accomplished that feat in a game. Last one to do it was Marina De La Luna. RC awaiting the next pitch from Holland. Interesting to see how she handles RC. Lined up the middle. 
So Tigers of Trinity keep it rolling as it is run in by Ellis. Garner's on first and second with no outs. Sends the stick over to Sydney Watson. Watson over two today. But still, Trinity trying to claw their way back. They have a lot of work to do. Holland, first offering. High inside. One O count. Looking at Sydney Watson's opportunity here. Not many times this game have the Tigers had runners on first and second with no outs. Next pitch. Misses. 2 0 count for Sydney Watson. The junior in the seven hole spot. Marina De La Luna on deck. And Angela Bottle in the hole. Next pitch for Watson. Fouled back, hitting off of one of the poles behind her. Watson, we know that she can put this ball into the outfield. She had the, the leadoff double during game number one for Trinity during that bottom of the sixth inning, which ultimately led to that two-run inning. And we'll see if she can get another one here. Next pitch. No strike call there. Good checkup by Watson. 3-1 count. And now, dangerous situation for Holland. She could threaten to walk the bases loaded. Payoff pitch. Is swung on, popped up in the air. And collected by Cummings. So, inducing the swing and the pop up. Sigh of relief for Holland, now working with one out on the board. Much more favorable. But Marina De La Luna still have to be on your toes when she comes up to the plate. She has the power to leave this park as she has proven time and time again. Program leader in home runs. Misses for a ball. With the tennis matches over. Don't have any final scores from over there, but with how good both those teams are. I'm just going to assume that they won. Fingers crossed we can, uh, we can confirm that. Inside. 2 0 count. Because I believe the men's tennis team is downstairs right now watching this game, considering the slight commentary I can hear from down there. They don't seem to be in a bad mood, so. Next pitch to uh, De La Luna. Over in to center field. Great catch by Ellis. That ETBU outfield has had to make some very tough plays, and Ellis does it again. Dale Luna put it into a good spot, but Ellis just flashing the le leather yet again. So Angela Baltzel will step up. Nine hole hitter with runners on the corners. Two outs in the inning. Baltzel on a bit of a cold streak right now. Looking for a hit. That ball much too weak. Hits the turf way before home plate. That'll allow RC to just stride on over to second. It's going to be another steal for RC who, you know, Last season didn't light up the world with her steals, only seven stolen bases in that department, but still definitely a threat on the base paths. Next pitch in there for a strike, 1-1 one, one count. Can confirm. Men's tennis beating Harden Simmons 8-1 to one, and women's tennis sweeping the day 9-0. to zero. They play Shriner later today, and SEAC tennis play is always very exciting. Very exciting for Trinity. Next pitch, swing over in to left field, collected by Stum. Tigers of Trinity leave first and third stranded. We head to the final inning. ETBU up 11 to six.
We'll see how much they can run up the score. Take a break on the Tiger Network as we head to the final inning. Now, number 21, Delaney Aloya, one for four today. Still out in the first, doubled in the third, struck out in the fourth, and grounded out in the sixth. And ETBU has gotten all of their bats, multiple plate appearances and at-bats over Trinity. First pitch from Krishbaum in the, for a strike but a new look at a new pitcher for this part of the ETVU order that has been doing very well. It's been a good opener for ETVU. Little grounder snagged by Tagawa. Good stretch by Carson Lee for the first out of the top of the seventh. Fantastic little play there. And Colin started that one out on or, uh, on the at bat with a very aggressive pitch. It looked like it was basically middle middle. Loya decided not to swing there and then managing it to force the ground out there by Loya. Fantastic pitching there by the freshman. As uh, now we're going to see Cummings up to bat again. Coming so far today, one for four on the day had a single. That one coming up the middle in the first inning. Other than that, has been forced out, uh, has had uh, a couple of flyouts and also a line out to her name so far. Next pitch is it in the zone. 2 0 count for Cummings. Two RBI on that single. Big hit is what gave ETBU the lead originally over Trinity. They've only extended it ever since then. Now a 3-0 count for Cummings. Threatens to walk her way over to first base. Tigers in the white with the maroon pinstripes. ETB with the powder blue top and pinstripe pants. I think they're, it's powder blue pinstripes. It's hard to tell from up here. Something interesting to note, the wind has picked up again. So if Cummings can poke one, particularly into right field, that could become dangerous as, actually, never mind. She's just going to go ahead and take the walk right there. And so up is going to come Haley Stum, who started at pitcher and has been kind of moved around defensively so far today. Two doubles and a single for Stum today. Also had a couple good defensive plays out in left field. Now number 18, Natalie Norwood coming into pinch run for ETBU. She heads on over to first Norwood. Another freshman of Mount Vernon, Texas. They have a baker's dozen worth of freshmen, so really any substitution is a very good chance that it is a first year. Now, Kishbaum getting the signal. Pitch, and a jumping Tagawa can't snag it out of the air. Throw to second. Just a little too high. Ball slot to jump. Almost a play coming, not Cummings, rather, the pinch runner, Norwood, a little behind, maybe thinking that Tagawa was going to snag it. 
But either way, runner on first and second now. So good work by Stum. Four for five today. It's been an excellent first collegiate career game for Haley Stum. It was a very close play at second there. And yeah, I think that Norwood was kind of expecting Tagawa to reach up and snag that one. Looks like we have potentially a pinch hitter coming in. Jalen Perez has the bat in her hand. And there's some discussion right now between uh, the coach and the home plate umpire. Number seven slot, number 44, Jalen Perez. And nope. no, there's been another change. So that one is going to be, looks to be number 25, Ava, Ava Nieto. So Nieto, the freshman out of Bernie, Texas, batted 483 during her senior year in high school and will be looking to get another hit, her first collegiate hit. First pitch to Nieto. Not in the zone, a 1-0 count. I'm sure she'll stay patient trying to get Hushbaum to throw a strike to her. No need to exert yourself if the pitcher doesn't throw a strike to you. That one misses. Here, it's a nice snap off of the glove of Williams with that power from Krishbaum, but just needs to find the accuracy because right now, going back to Major League, a bit of a wild thing. Next pitch. That one catches the zone. 2-1 count. You can see just how much more speed there is from, from Krishbaum in terms of just the speed out of the hand, the speed through the air, and you can hear the snap off of the glove from all the way up here. Grounder, quick flick over to second. That will get the second out of the inning. Baltzell makes a nice play, flips it to Tagawa. Still, Trinity not out of the woods just quite yet. Needing it to retire Brady Glenn. Brady Glenn, who is a perfect three for three today. And now runners at the corners for Glenn. She steps out. Both sides wanting to take a moment. ETBU up by five. Game certainly in hand unless Trinity can pull off a miracle in the bottom of the seventh. Stranger things have happened. 1-0 count to start things off for Glenn. Single, a double, drawn walk, and a single has been her day to day. See if she can get Norwood home from third. Can't do it via the sacrifice fly. That one's fouled back. 1-1 one, one count. It's a sign of a good disciplined team. Always running, no matter where the ball goes. Trying to put in full effort. Certainly not trying to end up in a situation earlier where defensive player bobbles the ball and you're not putting 100%, and then you just get thrown out. Trinity being very competitive is something that was talked about by, by this ETBU coaching staff. They were very impressed uh, during last year's games, which I think it's safe to say we can call blowouts uh, a pretty, you know, dominant victory by by ETBU, 11 to one and 13 to one victories for them. But Trinity never really gave up. Poked out into right field, gotten in by RC. That'll end the top of the seventh. Jordan RC ends the day for. ETBU's bats in game one. Well, Trinity Tigers need at least five runs to send us into extra six runs to walk it off. It'll be up to the top of the order. Hayden Del Toro, Samantha Tagawa, and, and Whitaker. If Whitaker stays in at that position, unless they decide to sub in who was originally there, we will take a break on the Tiger Network and see if Trinity can work a miracle.
Last chance for Trinity in the bottom of the seventh. It is 11 to 6, advantage ETBU. Hayden Del Toro, one for three today. Singled in the first, struck out in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Tigers really want to lead off with a hit. Tigers of Trinity, that is. First pitch, misses for ball one. It's going to be a difficult deficit to come back from being down five. Of course, not impossible, but definitely going to be quite the challenge. Del Toro watches the count tick up. One, one. Tagawa on deck for Trinity. And it looks like they will resub in Boudreaux at the three hole position if her holding the bat in the deck out is any indication. Del Toro over into center field. Great diving play by Mary Frances Ellis. Once again, three stars in the outfield for ETBU. Frances Ellis last season was absolutely perfect from the field. A or, or a perfect fueling percentage. 52 chances, 51 putouts on the season for her last year. And she continues a pretty good fielding performance so far, not just today, but hopefully setting up for what should be a good season for her in her junior year. Next pitch to Samantha Tagawa. Two strikes right off the bat, already in a hole. Tagawa 0 for 3 today, ground out, line out, line out. And really, ETBU could have been in a much more precarious situation if it weren't for the amazing plays by that outfield of Stum, Ellis, and Bell. Although most of the action has been out there in center and left, it is always good to see in your opener that you haven't lost any of your defensive prowess. Watches that one. Two, two count, it goes even. Tagawa trying to spark something for the Trinity Tigers. Meanwhile, Holland has pitched very well. Pitching for what she hopes to be six innings to collect the win for ETBU. Next out of the circle. Full count for Tagawa. Trying to reach base for the first time today. Full count pitch. Swung on. Strong aligner, but foul. And once again, the wind picks up. Moving the flagpole out in center field. It's a pretty good little late winter early spring day here in San Antonio, Texas. Maybe a little bit chilly, but with the sun coming out, it has warmed up a slight touch. That one hit out into center field, right into Ellis's glove. Only had to take a step to get there. And now, last chance for Trinity. It's all or nothing for Hannah Boudreau. She is going to re-sub in for Whitaker. Boudreaux trying to get on base. Got on base once today at least. And now down five, two outs on the board. It's going to be quite the two out rally if Trinity does end up taking this. But first, going to be down 0 1 in the count as that is lined to the right foul. Ground out, pop up, and a single for Boudreau on the day. Got pitch ran for by Whitaker when she did reach base. I assume we'll, we will see much of the same if she can get on base again. Holland's a one pitch. That one, once again, a little liner over to the right, just foul. So two good locations just can't keep it fair. And now Trinity down to their final strike. Boudreaux awaits Holland. Both players step in. 
It is a Tiger Derby here in San Antonio. 0-2 oh, pitch, swung on, but gets a piece of it. So Boudreaux stays alive for another pitch. Now, Holland staring down a win for herself and for ETBU to start the season off. Next pitch, misses, one, two count. Good patience by the freshman. Boudreaux and Trinity down, but trying to say not out just yet. Next pitch, swung on over into right field. That one will get down. So a base hit for Boudreaux. That'll pass the baton over to Carson Lee. Boudreaux was kind of nursing a little bit of an arm injury earlier on this season. Uh, one of the reasons why she's not behind the dish defensively at the moment, but doing a great job there, just able to get contact, poke it into right field, and almost thought there the bell would try and run up and grab it, but just kind of let it bounce harmlessly in front of her. As Lee goes over into left field, and that one is an amazing grab by Haley Stum. Once again, we can only say it so many times, the defensive efforts from this ETBU outfield shine yet again. And that one crushing the hopes of the Trinity Tigers for coming back into this one. ETBU blows by Trinity in game one, 11 to six. An excellent way for ETBU to end that one. Because once again, that outfield coming into play. Yeah, and, you know, absolutely fantastic job by especially um, Avery Holland. You know, coming into this one, uh, Trinity gets four runs to start it out. Holland comes in during the second, and just after that, basically ended it off against, uh, against the Tigers. Really did a great job of preventing runs. The only runs that she allowed was was that two-run homer by Jordan Arce. And speaking of Arce, let's just talk about her for a moment. What an absolutely fantastic offensive performance. We know her a lot for her arm in the circle, but you know she's kind of showing out a little bit offensively as well. She really did on a very exclusive list for herself now in the record book. Just two blasts and very strong. Jordan RC. She can hit, she can pitch. There's not much more you can ask for out of a softball player than that. Took two different pitchers deep. Ultimately, though, Avery Holland will get the win for game one. Josephine Colawine will have to take the loss. ETBU puts up two four spots, one in the fourth and w one in the top of the sixth to win it 11 to six. ETBU has Haley Stum to thank not only for her bat, but for her defensive efforts as well. Four for five for the freshmen. We will take a break in between games, roughly 25 minutes, I would say, until game two starts. Be sure to stay tuned as this is a doubleheader and ETBU versus Trinity University does have a sequel coming up. So stay tuned on the Tiger Network.
Welcome back to the Tiger Network for game two of ETBU versus Trinity University. I am Reed Rosales, once again joined by Caleb Reed, our in our connection for game two. Tristan Maddox led off last game, will lead off this game as well. She goes up against Jordan Arce. Arce in the circle yet again for the Tigers, did some damage with her bat out in right field. First pitch for her today, misses the zone for ball one to Maddox, and it's really an ace verse, ace pitcher versus ace hitter for both Tiger teams early on. RC, of course, had a fantastic offensive performance during game number one, but her pitching has been absolutely fantastic so far this season. Coming into this game with a 2 and 0 record so far in the year, 263 ERA on the season, as you can see on your screen right now. Uh, through for a complete game shutout during game number one uh, against Howard Payne. And definitely getting started off a little bit rough so far, 3-0, and oh, but hoping to maybe speed it up, getting a, or getting a ball exchange here <laughs> for Jordan Williams, who will be setting up behind the dish once again. She completes the battery, the Jordan ba battery for the Tigers of Trinity. 3-0 count to Maddox. Did plenty of damage with her bat in game one. But she stays patient. And Cardinal Sin, RC walks the first batter on four pitches. So runner on first as Courtney White will step up to the dish. The batting order for ETBU. Maddox was first, obviously. Courtney White now at the plate. Then Haley Stum, Torin Cummings, Delaney, Loya, Emma Bell, Brady Glenn, Mallory Pyle, and Mary Frances Ellis. That is your batting lineup for ETBU. The defensive alignment for the Trandy Tigers. RC and Williams completing the battery. Little meeting here at the circle early on as that is ball five in a row for RC. Carson Lee over at first, Tagawa at second, Angela Baltzel at shortstop, Marina De La Luna at third base, Hayden Del Toro in left, Sydney Watson out in center, and since RC is in the circle, Lee Gonzalez will be the one that gets the call to play right field. So just minimal changes for both Tiger teams. And now, Jordan Arce looking for her first strike of the game. Maddox over to her left. And the windup and the delivery. Swing and a miss, throw over to second. Not in time. Williams had a good pop up and a nice throw, but Maddox just a bit too fast. Got a good jump. So one and one count with a runner on second. Much more difficult to catch runners stealing, particularly in softball compared to baseball due to the shorter distance between the bags, only 60 feet compared to 90 feet in baseball. And it's something that you will likely be seeing a lot this season. Trinity loves to steal bags and it's, and it's definitely not the most difficult to get stolen bases. Next pitch, in for a strike. Count evens up, two and two. And umpire giving a low strike call. A little glance to the Tiger dugout for Trinity. They have their selection for pitch to two delivery. Grounded off the glove of Tagawa. Runner's gonna come home. Maddox will score over to second. Ball is dropped by Baltzel on the throw from Carson Lee. So White and uh, Maddox trade places. ETVU strikes lightning quick. Definitely can't blame Tagawa there. It was a very, very difficult play. And the throw there, I don't think that the throw by Lee was going to get there in time. It would have been incredibly close, but... I'd be surprised they tack an error on either of those plays there. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Next pitch. And for a strike from Arcee over to Haley Stum. Stum, excellent first collegiate game. Elevated all the way to the three hole for ETBU. Courtney White at the back of RC. Next pitch, in for a strike. Now quickly in a hole is the freshman Stum trying to work up against the sophomore Jordan RC. So RC, quick run given up in the top of the first. No outs on the board. The wind up, the pitch, fouled off. Having to go over to get the ball is Williams. Still an 0-2 count, did not get any better for Stum. But certainly, ETBU on the prowl, working with a runner in scoring position. And Stum ready to pounce on anything that Arcee gives her in the zone. Good eye there, takes the ball, one, two count. Arcee's got a couple of pitches to spare before she is in any real danger of walking Stum. On deck for ETBU is Torin Cummings and in the hole Delaney Loya. That one that poked out into right field. Gonzalez tracking it, makes the catch. And White's going to tag up and does so successfully. Runner on third now in the form of Courtney White. All ETBU, uh, all ETBU needs now is for Torrin Cummings, the cleanup hitter, stepping up to the dish to get a sacrifice fly. Just hit it out into the outfield. And I'm sure White will be able to score with ease. Of course, this being ETBU's second game of the season, just kind of going through their uh, previous season, had a 39-7 and seven overall record. A pretty impressive performance for them did not, unfortunately, result in a playoff appearance, but 22-5 and five in the conference and an impressive 29-1 and one at home. It was a good year for ETBU. They hosted a softball regional that la last year. Next pitch in there, one and one, which is also very nice for them because they actually hold, get to host the D3 Women's College World Series this year over in Marshall, as over in Salem. Old Stadium under some repairs. Next pitch from RC. That one hit out into center field. Watson tracking it, gets the catch. White's going to come home to score. And ETBU up two to nothing in the top of the first as they have worked counts, gotten some good hits. They're playing good softball right now. That's number 21, Delaney Loya, comes up to bat for the first time in game two. That, that is exactly what East Texas Baptist wanted out of Cummings right there. Just managing to get a sacrifice fly, get it deep into that part of the outfield and make it so that you couldn't possibly get a throw in in time. Absolutely what they drew up there whenever Cummings came up to the plate. First pitch misses for a ball. Now, number 21, uh, verse number 27, Delaney Loya versus Jordan R.C. Flag once again, flowing to the right. Next pitch, can't find the zone. 2-0 count. Now, Trinity, 3-2 and two on the year overall. ETBU 1-0 with that first win coming in game one. RC gives a glance to the wrist. Next pitch. That one hit out in to center field. Watson tracking, tracking, takes it in. And that will be the end of the top of the first. ETBU scores first, two runs. They lead it two to nothing. Trinity will come back for their side of the inning as we take a break on the Tiger Network.
Back in San Antonio, Hayden Del Toro gets the call to lead off once again for Trinity, going up against Tony Tamburello. Tamburello, one of the only pitchers from last year's pitching staff who saw serious innings. Getting a start this year, first pitch in for a strike. Del Toro going up against an upperclassman in Tamburello. Junior out of Magnolia, Texas. Came in. Absolutely. First games. Next pitch. In for a strike. So quick deficit for Del Toro. Down an 0-2 count. Batting order for Trinity. And Del Toro. Samantha Tagawa. Hannah Boudreau. Carson Lee. Jordan Williams. Jordan Arce. Marina De La Luna. Sydney Watson. And Angela Baltzel. Del Toro pokes it to Tamburello. And Tamburello throws out. Hayden Del Toro with ease over at first. First out of the inning for Trinity. Just a weak grounder to Tamburello. Brings up Samantha Tagawa. Freshman trying to make a splash impact in the lineup. It's ETBU. And Tamburello give the first offering as a ball. Tagawa started out her collegiate career with a very, very impressive top of the ninth triple. That one coming at Concordia up in Austin, Texas. And that one ultimately proved to be the game winner. Trinity won that one five to four. And in the series against Howard Payne, Tagawa went one for three during her two performances and had a couple of RBIs to her name. Also had a walk as well. Tagawa, 3-0 count now as Tony Tamburello. And uh, Mallory Pyle are the battery for ETBU. Shows bunt, pulls back, but a strike called. 3-1 count now. Hitters count. Defensive alignment for ETBU. Over at first base, Delaney Aloya, Courtney White at second. Tristan Maddox over at short as uh, Tagawa draws the walk on the 3-1 count. So Tigers get their first base runner. Hannah Boudreau steps up to the dish. Torin Cummings at third. Haley Stum over in left. Mary Francis Ellis in center field. And Emma Bell over in right. So... Once again, minimal changes for both sides. Next pitch, going to second. Tagawa swipes the base. Pyle just too late on the throw. So now, Boudreaux working with a runner in scoring position in the form of Tagawa. Those last three names that you mentioned for, for ETBB, uh, Stum, Francis, and Bell, they were particularly impressive during game number one. A big reason why Trinity was held scoreless for the, uh, for the final few innings as Trinity was able to get balls into the area, but the outfield just did a fantastic job of limiting any plays, getting a lot of putouts, and ultimately able to secure uh, the 11 to 6 victory just a few minutes ago uh, for East Texas Baptist to get their first win of the season. 3 0 count. Up and in. So back to back walks issued by Tamburello. Now runners on first and second for Trinity. Cleanup hitter Carson Lee. Sophomore looking to continue her impressive performances. Had a good freshman campaign. First offering to her. Misses for ball one. ETBU making the playoffs via the Pool A bid, winning the ASC. They got to host SUNY Genesio, Texas Lutheran, and Bellhaven. Ultimately did not win their regional at home as Bellhaven would advance out of that group of four. But still, a solid year for ETBU. Very handled much by pitching. It's a lot 
it's an interesting question for ETBU this year of who will be the pitcher to kind of take the place of those two workhorses they had in the circle last year. That one gets the strike zone, 2-1 count for the Trinity Tiger cleanup hitter. Tamburello last season did have a 228 ERA, but only 46 innings pitched. And whenever you're looking at the stats, that is the most of any pitcher from last season that is currently on the Grounder staff. Grounder over to Maddox. Maddox gets the out over at first. Now two outs on the board. Runners on second and third. Jordan Williams. One of two seniors in this batting order for Trinity. Comes in as a lefty. We'll see if she tries to slap the ball or if she is going more for power. That one misses. 1-0 -oh count for Williams. And ETBU in a dangerous situation with runners on second and third for Trinity could tie the game up with a nice swing from Williams. Next pitch. Catches the zone for a strike. 1-1 one, one count. It's a it's a very or er, I don't want to say young. I mean, it is a very young pitching uh core for East Texas Baptist, but it's also one that we don't know a whole lot about. Only two of the or, or, or only two of the nine pitchers on their staff actually have stats going back to last season. Six of them being freshmen, one of them being a transfer from UT Tyler, that one being Madeline Melton Jr. out of Hallsville. And it's it's definitely going to be something that this, um, uh, that this ETBU team is going to have to contend with. You've got a big question mark at pitcher. What do you do in a situation like this? That pitch misses, and now another question mark. 3-1 count. What do you give to Jordan Williams? Could give the unintentional, intentional walk to force a force play at every base. 3-1 delivery. Sharp grounder. It's rolling a foul. I think it went off of Williams at first, so should have been dead ball immediately. But either way, full count for Williams. Runners on second and third with Jordan RC on deck for Trinity. Certainly want to get the bat in her hands. Tamborello, payoff pitch. Grounded over to first and easy enough play for Delaney Loya. Steps on the bag and that'll be the end of the first inning Tigers strand two on oh, yeah. second and third. We will take a break on the Tiger Network as do up for ETBU, Emma Bell, Brady Glenn, and Mallory Pyle. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network. Back in San Antonio, Emma Bell, freshman, stepping in in the six-hole position, this time in the batting order. Arcee trying to improve on her performance, giving up two runs in the top of the first. 
Certainly looking to put a goose egg in the top of the second frame for ETBU. First pitch is in for a strike to Bell. Once again, first series of the year for ETBU. Getting a nice win in game one. Showing off a lot of the prowess they did last year. Uh, poked over into left field. That one will get down in front of Del Toro. So a lead-off single for Emma Bell. Bell, the freshman out of Eustis, had a absolutely fantastic senior season, 600 batting average. That's something that you very rarely see at any level, uh, especially, you know, uh, at, a, at a competitive high school level. And along with 32 stolen bases, she is a speed demon as well. So... Very, very dangerous position for Trinity to be in with her on the base at the moment. First pitch misses for ball one. And another dangerous player in Brady Glenn steps on up. Glenn had some key hits in game one. She got herself on the base quite a bit. Now working with a runner. The throw not in time and offline. Good swing by Glenn to protect the runner on their trip over to second. Bell has a steal. Absolutely fantastic work there by East Texas Baptist. And again, just mentioning, what, or whenever you got somebody who can move like that, it can be very, very difficult to keep her held in check. Bunt laid down, and it is fair. Out at first, but man... That was a fantastic punt by Glenn. Maybe Glenn wish it rolled a little bit more out at first, but definitely did her job in advancing the runner. That one sat right on the line. The official watching it all the way, and it was confirmed to be in play, and so a great heads-up job there by the Trinity Tigers. It just dropped dead almost immediately. We're going to get a replay of it here, and you can see a little bit of backspin on it. Kind of just helped it to die right there and the now line. a little liner over to lee that'll be a quick out too i'm sure we'll see that one on replay as well just a little dinker over to lee see it on the replay just takes the first pitch short and simple tigers have two outs on the board now can't get a sack fly to bring bell home but mallory pile Victim of that line out brings up Mary Frances Ellis. Ellis, speedy, so she can definitely run out of grounder. Tigers got to stay on their toes. Tigers of Trinity, that is. And just like that, we have already hit the uh, the bottom here of this <laughs> little grounder over to Baltzel. The throw, not in time. RBI. Ellis runs it out. RBI for Mary Frances Ellis. Bell comes in to score. ETBU extends the lead three to nothing. And just like that, we've already hit the very top here of this ETBU batting order. So going to be a very, very, very fast game here played by the East Texas Baptist Tigers. Just trying to continue to extend this lead here over Trinity. First pitch to Maddox in her second appearance. That one does not go. So 1-0 count to Maddox. Maddox so far today has not seen a strike thrown by Jordan Arce. He got walked in four straight pitches at her first at bat and now setting up for 1-0. Runner goes. Throw. Not in time as... ETBU is taking very good advantage of their stealing opportunities. Jordan Williams a bit out of position at the catcher role. Usually playing first base, but Trinity unusually short on catchers considering they had an abundance last year. <laughs> and that will be, I think, hit by pitch. So just too far in, catches, yeah, on the replay, catches Maddox there on the leg. So runners on first and second. 
So that'll be the third hit by pitch of the game or er, er, of the day, I believe, for Maddox. She's gonna be definitely wanting to get nice baths whenever she gets back to Marshall, which will not be tomorrow because they actually have a game up in Georgetown tomorrow. They've got another two-game series going up to uh, a pretty familiar SEAC rival, Southwestern. Oh, one count for Courtney White working with. Runners on first and second. RC trying to limit the damage, but still, ETBU extending the lead just a bit more. Strike, so 0 uh, 2 count. ETBU up 3 to nothing. Now, Trinity. Could get out of the inning here with a good pitch by RC. Courtney White had a single for an RBI. That one misses. Ball one, one two count. Still in RC's favor, but you cannot let your guard down against the top two senior hitters for this ETBU squad. Entire team that is just so talented. That one ripped out into right field, right to Gonzalez. End of the top, at, top of the second, damage done as ETBU goes up three to nothing. We will take a break on the Tiger Network as we go down to the bottom of the second. Four. Jordan Arce, definitely a player to look out for on both sides as the pitcher comes to bat for the Trinity Tigers. Arce, De La Luna, and Watson do up for Trinity. Right now, Tony Tamborello trying to continue. Her good streak right now. That pitch too low, 1-0 count. ETBU and Trinity have certainly have had many rivalries across many different sports. <laughs> ETBU finding success in many programs. Softball being one of their most successful, however. Next pitch for Tamborello. Delivery. That one gets away from Pyle. So 2 0 count for RC. Maybe taking a bit more caution against the sophomore who had two home runs in her last game. M mentioning the overall success for ETBU, particularly in softball and against Trinity in particular, the, uh, the all-time series record stands at Trinity having only three wins compared to ETBU 17. And uh, Trinity, of course, three and five on the road, make that three and six now. Uh, after the uh, after the earlier win today, but the last time that uh, Trinity beat ETBU was actually here at home. So two quick strikes to RC evens up the count, catching the inside of the zone. Tamborello has dug her way to an even count. Next pitch, Whoa. swiped over to the Tiger Dara. Watch out. Don't want to get hit. It's a good thing they have netting over there. 
Now Tamburello. <gasps> two two count. In the bottom of the second. Swing and a miss. Now the throw over to first in time. So first strikeout for Tamburello on the day. Gets RC swinging. Brings up Marina De La Luna in the seven hole. The senior program leader in home runs for a career. Trying to put a run on the board for Trinity. That ball hits the turf before it reaches the plate. 1-0 count. On that strikeout there by Tamborella, it looked like her foot kind of slipped there as she went to plant. Uh, it obviously doesn't look to be affecting her too much right now, but you can see it again right there, just kind of a little bit of a stumble as she goes for the release. Haven't been noticing that all throughout the game. I'll, or, uh, or I'll be definitely checking that out to see if it's a thing with her motion or if maybe something down that's causing her to slip a bit. 2-1 count for De La Luna. Tamburello trying to put one into the zone. De La Luna does have some speed, but mainly known for the power in her bat. That one hits the zone. Count evens up, two and two. Trinity looking for their first hit of game two. ETBU certainly not looking for them to get on base. Tamborello has issued two walks. Trying to get a second strikeout. That one inside. And now the count is juiced. It'll be uh, the payoff pitch for Tamborello coming up. De La Luna focuses in. It is the senior against the junior. That pitch catches the zone. De La Luna strikes out looking. Some good pitching by Tamborello. Puts two outs on the board. You could tell that De La Luna thought that one was going to be a walk. She threw the bat back, but it then immediately got the strike call. A bit of a surprise there for, I think, and it, er, and seeing her go down looking is not something that we're too used to. De La Luna really likes to swing the bat, has a lot of power behind that bat, as, of course, mentioning the home run total for her on her career. And it is kind of surprising to see her go down like that. Next pitch from Tamborello, fouled off. Back to the Tiger dugout. 0-2 count quickly for Sydney Watson. The junior eight hole hitter trying to get on base, get anything going for Trinity. Because Tamborello has shut down any and all momentum that Trinity could have had. Little grounder taken in by Cummings. That'll be the end of the second inning as Cummings makes the throw over to Loya to put out Sydney Watson. We're going to take a break on the Tiger Network as we head over to the third inning.
Haley Stum up to bat. She leads off for ETBU here in the top of the third. Haley Stum, Torin Cummings on deck, and Delaney Loya in the hole. Trying to put more runs on the board because ETBU has scored in every inning so far. I'm sure they want to score in the third as well. Pitch from Marcy. That one, Jammer over to left field. That one gets down and past the Tiger outfielders over there. Baltzel ranged back. Del Toro came in, but just right in between them, the exact wrong spot. And to make matters worse, they are going to have the sun in their eyes over there just by the nature of where the sun is rising and the nature of the field. So Haley Stum gets to second. Unlike game number one, the cloud covers really disappeared. And so the sun starting to peek through and it was just at the wrong angle, looking at the shadows on the field, looking at, uh, of course, the time of day, the wind, everything kind of combining to perhaps have uh, the fielders, uh, those being Baltzel and Del Toro, kind of losing the ball in the sun a little bit. You can see Del Toro wearing the shades, Baltzel not and it may have caused a little bit of that miscommunication, a bit of that issue in terms of fielding that ball. Now, Torin Cummings tried just to show bunt, but ends up pulling back. Strike anyways. 1-1 one, one count. It's a promising seasons for many ETBU sports programs. Baseball for ETBU, went all the way to the Division Three College World Series last year. They have been building up that program for quite a while. For ETBU, success is no mistake in softball. They are good year after year. That one catches a piece of the ball, but in the glove of Williams, strike two. As Cummings down in a one-two count. And ETBU has been building up other programs as well. ETBU women's volleyball making the NCAA tournament. At, they went over to Oshkosh, where they made it all the way to the final of that regional. That one will ring up Cummings. Good pitching by Jordan Arce. Strikes out Torin Cummings. Now one out on the board. Haley Stum at Arce's back. Delaney Loya comes up to bat. Loya so far today has flown out. That fly out going to center fielder Sidney Watson. And again, with one out here. Getting it over to the Luna. Over to first is out. Now throwing it to third. Not in time. So Stum will advance to third. But two outs. Just a little grounder directly to Dale Luna. Could have been dangerous if it got past her. But too quick on the draw is Marina Dale Luna. That'll send Emma Bell up to bat for ETBU with the chance to get the fourth run for the Tigers of Powder Blue. You can see kind of the stare down there between De La Luna and Stum. And Stum, the freshman, not backing down at all. And kind of impressive considering how kind of physically intimidating De La Luna is with, of course, her height, her size. Uh, Coach Wittenauer describing her as a, uh, as a physical specimen every time that she either gets the ball in her hands or gets the bat in her hands. And surprised to see uh, Stum kind of not blinking in the face of, uh, of the experienced senior. Certainly chalk that one up to first year naivete. Arce. Next pitch. In there for a strike, 2-1 count to Bell. Always got to admire first years and freshmen's confidence in every situation. But it also leads to some, we'll just call it boneheaded decisions from the first year class. But it's all a part of the fun for teams and their coaches. That one slapped right over to De La Luna, put out over to first. And that will be a scoreless frame for ETBU. 
Go down to the bottom of the third. Do up for Trinity. Angela Waltzel, Hayden Del Toro, and Samantha Tagawa. We will take a break on the Tiger Network and see if Trinity can cut into this deficit at all. Welcome back to Trinity University. Angela Baltzel will be the one swinging the stick to start things off for Trinity. Tamborello looking to continue on her good day. Pitching a no-hitter right now. Baltzel will try to put an end to that. But right now, a bunch of 0-1s throughout the Tiger lineup. Some 0-0s from drawn walks. First pitch in for a strike. Tamborello continues to work the zone. And again, uh, we talked about it a bit during uh, or, or during the start of this game and of course during the previous game one, but this is a this is a ETBU team that really has a lot of questions at the pitcher position. You've Really, your most experienced pitcher is Tony Tamborello, who's in the circle right now, but only 46 innings pitched. There were only 46 games for ETBU last year, so whenever you're averaging only one inning per game, you, it's really difficult to call that, you know, so-called experience. Balto remaining patience with Tamborello. She collects herself for a moment before stepping back into the batter's box. 2-1 count for Baltzel. Nine-hole hitter trying to get a leadoff hit in. The third inning, fair ball. Good act, quick acting by uh, Mallory Pyle. Just barely staying fair. But first out of the inning, can see it right here. Yeah, just barely staying fair. Good job by Pyle for having that awareness. We circle back to the top of the order. Hayden Del Toro, 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to the pitcher. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Tamarello is just slicing and dicing right now. Absolutely great job there by Tamarello to get Del Toro to pull that one back. Swing and a miss. 0-2 count quickly for Del Toro. You can see it on her face and also in just the general body language. Hayden really, really wants to make contact on this ball and send it deep. Just get something started here for Trinity. That one misses. Trying to get Del Toro to chase. One, two count. We got out on the board. Del Toro trying to be credited with the Trinity Tigers first hit. Weak contact goes foul. And it is like Tony Tamborello is pitching a maze and the Tigers of Trinity are a bit lost at the plate right now. Tony the Tiger putting in some insane work today from the circle. Let's see what you can do here. Next pitch. Went. That will be a strikeout. And for Tony Tamborello, that pitch was great. Samantha Tagawa will step on up to the Oche for the Trinity Tigers. Two outs for Trinity right now. Tagawa takes the first pitch for a ball. A really 
trying to prevent three straight scoreless innings for Trinity. But they are being hard pressed right now by Tamburello. That pitch, that misses. 2-0 count. Tamburello has issued two walks today, one of them being to Tagawa. So Tagawa certainly has the patience. Tamburello's next delivery inside for a strike. Working the closer part of the plate. With 2-1 coming up here, it'll be very, very interesting to see what Tagawa does. Next pitch. That one misses. 3-1 count as Tamburello versus Tagawa. Tamburello. 3-1 count. It is a hitter's count. We'll see if Tagawa gets the green light. Swings at it, but a sharp foul there. It juices the count. Bottom of the third, ETBU leading three to nothing. Tamburello pitching a gem. Payoff pitch, that one dinked over, it gets down. So Tagawa, little dinker over to right field, it gets down for a base hit. Fantastic little play there, just got it right over the head there of Courtney White, as you can see, and just got it right into that gap, and that's exactly what you want with a hit like that. If it isn't gonna go all the way out to the wall, you want it to fall right into that little sweet spot right there between second and right field. Boudreau takes the first pitch for a ball. Hannah Boudreau, no at-bats today because she walked in her first plate appearance. Trying to draw another one, I'm sure. And you know, not every hit needs to be pretty. Sometimes they gotta be gritty. Now, Tamburello's pitch, little grounder, doesn't get through the throw to first, not in time. So a base hit for oh, Hannah Boudreau as Trinity, after having no hits for the first two and two thirds innings, have now linked two hits together. And so now we're gonna see Carson Lee coming up to bat here. During the earlier game, Lee did have uh, two at bats, also two walks. So technically 0 for two, but was on base enough times to get two runs during the earlier game. And if we know anything about Carson, she is incredibly, incredibly patient. Lee takes the first pitch for ball one. Tamburello going through her windup, the pitch. Sharp grounder foul to the left. It's off of the Tiger dugout. Netting in front of it. Last season, Lee had uh, 14 walks, which was one of the best on the team. She's just got a great eye for the ball, able to see where it's going and able to not swing at bad pitches, which is something that Coach Wittenauer has been working with the team on so far this week, especially after the kind of a little bit poor performance at Howard Payne, getting a lot of swinging strikeouts at pitches that weren't really competitive. And it's something that they've been working on, just making sure not to swing at bad pitches and make sure to isolate the good ones. 2-1 count for Lee. Tamburello's pitch misses. Batters count, 3-1. Still two outs on the board. Got to be careful. Any grounder that they can get from Lee will certainly end the inning, except if they commit an error. But with how good the gloves for ETBU have been. That'll be hard pressed to find. That one lined out over into left field and is unable to be caught. First run gets home and uh, base, hit base hit RBI. Tagawa gets home and Carson Lee with that base hit RBI puts the Trinity Tigers down three to one. Runners on a second and third. And Jordan Williams stepping up to the plate. Stum tried to dive after it right there, but it just ended up falling out of the glove. The glove actually falling off of her hand 
and then that allowed the run to come in, and then the throw, kind of a bit offline, actually nails Boudreaux there, right, up, or right about looked like in the hip. First pitch to Jordan Williams. This is for ball one. Still two outs in the inning. But really the first play that the outfield hasn't been able to make for ETBU. They've been a very, very impressive group of fielders so far today. And going back to last season, uh, of course, Mary Frances Ellis, uh, a perfect 1,000 on the uh, on the fielding. But Bell and Stum, both of them being freshmen, so new to this position at the college level and doing very, very good in their collegiate debuts. And unfortunate there that Stum couldn't haul it in, but, when it, er, but w whenever you got such a difficult play to make, it's almost impossible to be able to catch that one. 3-0 count for Jordan Williams. Temporello's 3-0 pitch. Inside, and Williams draws the walk. Bases are juiced for Jordan Arce. They know how dangerous she is. Two of their pitchers found out last time. And Arce certainly is looking to go yard yet again. Grounded out in, or struck out in the second. First pitch from Tamborello. Big swing and a miss. Certainly hacking like she's trying to leave the park. Now taking a breath in and out. Tamborello took advantage of that eagerness in the first at bat. Next pitch. Misses for ball one. Nearly gets away from Pyle. Even with the uh, even with her power, she's got to make sure to put it into a good spot because leaving the yard is obviously very difficult. You know, I talked about Jordan Arce getting those two homers last time out. It doesn't sound that difficult, but with two outs, you cannot afford a sack here. Check swing, strike, one two count. They are climbing the ladder. We'll see. Where Tamborello goes next, I'm checking the glance at the wrist. I'm going to predict it's going to be a way. I'd say would probably want to go low and try and get R.C. chasing. That one going up high. <laughs> Slaps it over to the Tiger dugout. Trini Tiger dugout over on the third baseline. That went basically the exact opposite direction of where I was predicting, so I'm not going to try and make a prediction again. I think there's a reason why I'm up here and and they're down there. Tamborello, one, two count versus RC. That one, a little dinky ground ball hitting off of the Trinity Tiger dugout. Prime opportunity for the Trinity Tigers if they can get this one in play, especially in the outfield, is going to be a difficult task. The netting for the Trinity dugout getting a lot of work today. Good patience by Jordan RC. 2-2 two, two count, two outs. Number two pitching, number 27 hitting. Has two throws to 20. It's going to be a battle for which two is greater. Tamborello's pitch inside. So count is juiced, bases are juiced. We'll see who takes advantage of it. This is the situation that really defines a player right here. Bases loaded, full count, two outs, and a good hit would take the lead. Tamborello's pitch stays alive, nearly hitting Taylor Luna, who is on deck right now. But it is certainly a high-pressure situation, but Arcee, no stranger to that. When you pitch... A shutout against TLU where your team gives you one run. You're feeling pressured the entire time. But this time, she's feeling it with the stick rather than with the ball in her hand. Tamborello's pitch. That one fouled off. And RC maybe a little jumpy, but trying to get contact any way she can. But there is certainly nothing wrong with drawing the walk. 
something that I'm noticing, uh, a trend on Tuesday against Howard Payne was that a lot of the fouls were going off to the right. This time, a lot of the fouls are going off to the left. So now, instead of being behind the pitch, a lot of these players are early. Next pitch. Down the ground. It gets past the third baseman. One run will score. Lee comes in. Trinity ties up number 16, ETBU. Three to three. That is exactly what Trinity wanted there, just right past the outstretched glove there of Torn Cummings. And it was a good position by Cummings, just couldn't reach out there in time. And now we've got a fully tied up game with. Marina De La Luna up to bat. We know her power and her strength. Let's see what she can do here. First pitch to De La Luna. Blown away for ball one. But Williams on second. RC on first. Two outs on the board. RC is fast enough to swipe a base. Williams, on the other hand, doesn't quite have RC's speed. Next pitch. Gets in for a strike. 1-1 one, one count. And now three spot in the bottom of the third for Trinity. Tying up the game. ETBU was expecting a fight coming in here. And grounder snagged by Courtney White. Great job by her. Prevents any more runs from coming across. As that'll end the third inning. So, flashing the leather is Courtney White, but damage done. It is three to three. It's all tied up in this battle for the Tiger mascot. We'll take a break on the Tiger Network as we head to the fourth. And we are back in play here in the top of the fourth. Leading off for ETBU is Brady Glenn on deck, Mallory Pyle, and in the hole, Mallory, Mallory, Mary Frances Ellis. My bad. Two M names. Found to confuse them at some point this broadcast. First pitch is too high. Ball one for Brady Glenn. Had a sacrifice in the second inning. Just getting the runner across. Trying, doing her job very well. So no at-bats for her right now. Next pitch from Arcee. Misses. Ball two. Arcee trying to induce a ground ball perhaps, but Right now, Brady Glenn not biting. Junior had a great game in game one. Next pitch. In there for a strike, zips it. RC last season definitely played the role of the ace. 101 innings pitched, also had a few relief appearances, er, appearances as well. Did have a seven and, nine, seven and nine record, which isn't obviously the best. You would prefer those numbers to be flipped, if anything. But in her 29 appearances, 17 of those were starts, and just a very, very impressive season for her as a freshman. 2-2 two -two count. Arcee gets another one in. Now, Glenn, it's a game of poker. 
We'll see who folds. And now, RC gets the signal. RC's 2-2 pitch. Misses on the inside. 3-2 count. Just a bit too tight inside there, but now with the full count, <laughs> not only will, will RC have to be protective to avoid a walk, but we will also have to see Glenn be protective to not strike out. The pitch, head out in uh, to uh, second base. Taken in uh, by Baltzel. Thought it was stronger coming off the bat, but no, settles into Baltzel's glove as she ranges over to get it. First out of the inning for ETBU. Kind of a bit of a surprise that that ball didn't go further because, I mean, you can't see it from this angle right now, but the wind has picked up once again, and it is blowing into the outfield. It's almost perfectly behind home plate, blowing towards center. So kind of a bit of a surprise there to see that it didn't go a bit further than it already did. ETBU season last year ended in an elimination game against Texas Lutheran. Familiar SCAC foe for Trinity. Oh, Certainly top of the class in Region 10, though, are these ETBU Tigers. That bunt laid down, but goes foul. 1-1 one, one count. These Trinity Tigers trying to break their way in to that top of the class. But now with Mallory Pyle at the plate, lined out. Last time, just a little weak liner over to Carson Lee at first base. 1-1 one, one count, one out. ETBU trying to not go two frames scoreless. That one in there for a strike. 1-2 one, count now. A lot of excitement here for the Tiger faithful. Good showing for Trinity. Now, the Trinity Tiger faithful. The Trinity Tiger faithful. That is true. Even when I can get into a sport that doesn't have Colorado College in it, Tigers still find their way in to San Antonio. And now, Jordan Arce, 2-2 count against Mallory Pyle. Pyle awaits the offering. Swing and a miss. Pyle swings on an inside pitch. Great location by RC. And now two strikeout. And now two outs thanks to the strikeout. Fantastic, fantastic pitch sequence there by Jordan RC. Managed to get her chasing. And whenever you are able to draw the swing and the miss like that, it's just there's no other better feeling, I'd imagine being able to fool somebody like that. First pitch in there for a strike against Mary Frances Ellis. Catching them looking, I'm sure, is a pretty rewarding feeling, but managing to get or get the swinging strikeout in particular, it, or it not only means that, that you won as a pitcher, but it means that you beat the batter as well. Next pitch, little roller to Deluna, the throw. Not in time. Ellis, despite the great defensive play by Della Luna, just too fast. That speed from Mary Frances Ellis has worked out in her favor time and time again. Go back to the top of the lineup with Tristan Maddox. She's drawn a walk, she's been hit by a pitch. We'll see if she can find another way to prevent having an at-bat. First pitch, steal attempt is going to be good. Throw was certainly online and in time. Just can't apply the tag. So Mary Frances Ellis swipes second. But now, that one looked very, very close there. One of the closer plays that, that I think that we've seen so far this season, but Close work there and able to get there to second safely. And so now there's no force out at second. So either got to get the strikeout or 
Got to get a play to the right side of the field here for Lee. ETBU trying to take the lead again. That one is fouled off. And another souvenir for TUPD. Sure, they'll like that one as much as they like the last 100. Now, 2 1 count for Maddox. RC trying it to <laughs> finish off ETBU in the top of the fourth. Gets her to swing out into center field over the head of Watson. ETBU takes the lead again. Maddox keeps her role going. Mary Frances Ellis comes in to score easily. Watson, ball just right over her head. Maddox shows off her power. Wasn't really an issue of getting lost in the sun there. Watson just couldn't reach that in time. And instead of diving like we saw earlier on today, she just decided to pull the glove in and focus on sprinting to chase it down and prevent that double from maybe becoming a triple. ETBU up four to three now. Certainly looking for more runs as Courtney White steps up and takes a strike. Six hits for ETBU on the day. But both sides have shown their capabilities for offense. Now, Courtney White trying to bring home her senior teammate. Shows bunt, but pulls back smartly. Ball, 1-1 one, one count. The coordination between Maddox and White, especially with their respective defensive positions, it just goes to show how strong the relationship can be between two players so close to each other on the field. And, you know, uh, when talking with the coaches, they are just two fantastic players, not just offensively with the bats, but also defensively being able to flash the leather, get some double play opportunities, and just overall play some fantastic baseball. Now, pitch from RC, 2-1 count. Courtney White, the offering, slaps it over to Tagawa. Tagawa bobbles it and is going to throw home. Way in time and way out of place is Maddox. So a bit of a base running decision, mental error there. But that'll end the top of the fourth. One run comes across. ETBU goes up four to three. We will take a break on the Tiger Network as RC tries to hold down the fort. Sydney Watson leads off for the Trinity Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth. They work at a deficit once again. Watson leads off. Baltzel on deck and Hayden Del Toro in the hole. First pitch from Tim Barello. In there for a strike. Great little off speed movement there by Tim Barello. That one looked to be going outside and then it just dropped right on in. And those are the kind of pitches that you really, really want, especially against Watson, who doesn't have a ton of power, but does have great ability to contact. That one hit over into left center field. That's going to get down and go off the wall. Sydney Watson heads over to second base. Leadoff double for Sydney Watson. 
here to start the bottom of the fourth. Just like I was saying, not a ton of power, but great ability to, to get contact on the ball. You can see it right there. It was breaking, going towards the bottom of the zone. And Watson able to get a great piece of that when she was sitting down low all the way. And a beautiful double there to lead it off. Very similar to what we saw during game number one against Howard Painter in that sixth. The bunt laid down. Watson will head over to third. Small ball being played by the Trinity Tigers. Balto does her job. And now Hayden Del Toro takes the stick yet again. 0 for 2 today. One out on the board for Trinity, but Watson over at third. In that situation for Balto, that's pretty much all that you can really ask for because she has had a few good hits so far this year, but as a nine-hole hitter, your spot is really just to move the players forward. And she did it right there, managed to lay down the bunt, got the player over to third in time, and now Del Toro going to be working with a runner just 60 feet away with, of course, the out. Del Toro takes the first pitch for a strike. That next pitch misses for a ball, so 1-1 one, one count. First pitch was a strike, and the second pitch was a ball, so now 1-1 one, one count for Del Toro. Tigers trying to tie this one up. Catches that one for a strike. So one, two count, Del Toro has grounded out to the pitcher and swung at a bad ball for a strikeout. Del Toro focusing in. Tambrell's pitch. That one hit over into left field, hits off of the netting. High angle, but not in play. So Hayden Del Toro will have to reset once again. Del Toro last season did have nine RBIs to her name. Already five so far coming into this series and uh, hoping for a lot more here. Tempereo's pitch, that one hit over into left, over foul territory off the net. It's a foul. That one just barely kissed over or, or, or kissed on the very, very top of the net there. I thought that one was going to go over and into the kind of shaded tree area, but I guess just managed to catch one of the guide wires there and end up on the field side. Tamborello's pitch inside. That's another ball. I will make it a... 2-2 two, two count for Hayden Del Toro. Tamborello trying to take the bull by the horns. Del Toro not backing down. 2-2 two, two count pitch. That one hit over to third. Tries to tag over at third, but is overthrown. Now runner comes home. Trinity ties it up again. That's going to be an error that's going to be credited over to Cummings. Cummings last season led the team in terms of errors, but only with four. So a very, very big surprise to see, especially considering that she had uh, over 100 chances last year. Overall, a very, very good defender, but just a rare mistake right there. And it now ties this game up at four all. Samantha Tagawa trying to keep the Tigers of Trinity on a roll. Yeah, Cummings trying to keep Watson on third, but ended up getting Watson home unintentionally by overthrowing Loya over at first. Tagawa waits for the next pitch. That one grounded foul. So now 1-1 one, one count for Samantha Tagawa. One for one today. Drew a walk in the first and singled in the third. Started a chain of a couple hits for these Trinity Tigers. Del Toro on first base. She's certainly a speed threat. Runner goes and dropped ball by Pyle. Easy steal for Del Toro. She swipes second base. Now at the back of Tamborello. 2-1 count. 
One out in the bottom of the fourth. As it looks like they are going to want to exchange the ball. The exchange does happen. A little bit of confusion going on in the stadium as well because the scoreboard uh, only says zero outs. There's one out here, but the ball exchange, not something that you see a lot in softball, especially compared to baseball where, where you sometimes get you know six, seven balls in a single at bat. That one uh, almost ending up in the utility closet over there, door open. Be a surprise for whoever walks in there. But now Tagawa working with even count, two and two. Del Toro at second with their speed. A good enough hit will certainly bring her home. That one poked. Doesn't get over the net. No souvenir for TUPD this time. Foul ball. Still a 2-2 two -two count. Tamburello giving the one out signal to everybody. Good communication on this ETVU squad. Every pitch is met with a reminder of how many outs they have. That one, a little jammer that's hit foul over to the left. So that'll make it still 2-2 two -two here. And again, Tagawa doing very, very good for herself so far this season. Tamburello trying to strike out Tagawa. Instead, the count is juiced yet again for Tamburello. But seemingly unfazed, but pressure building up. Certainly don't want to walk Tagawa. Boudreaux on deck for the Tigers. Lee in the hole. 3 2 pitch. Grounder. Hits off of the Trinity Tiger dugout netting. When picking up yet again. Wh whoever built the netting uh, for these dugouts did an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, the Trinity dugout in particular has experienced a lot of abuse today, but it's just hanging in there. That one is fouled. Now, we are reaching some high pitch counts for this at bat. I haven't. Should have been keeping track, but imagine we are getting really deep into it now. Plenty of balls that Tagawa has fouled off. Certainly being a thorn in Tamburello's side. 3-2 pitch. That one hit up the middle. That one's going to get down. Hayden Del Toro is going to go around third and come in to score. Runner goes to second. Tagawa is safe. Trinity. They take the lead. Five to four, great hit by Tagawa. After getting no hit before the third inning, these Trinity bats have come alive within the last two innings here as, as now they're gonna take a five to four lead over the East Texas Baptist Tigers. And now looks like we're getting a stoppage, a little bit of movement there on the, uh, or in right field. and. It looks like this might be day over for Tony Tamborello. As I saw somebody running in from the outfield, actually a couple of players running in from the outfield now. Uh, you can't really see it on, on your screens, but some players have come in from the ETBU dugout and now Tamborello walking into the dugout, or, or sorry, uh, coming from the ETBU bullpen as now we are going to get our first looks here at Ava Rodriguez, the freshman out of Bernie, Texas. We saw her batting earlier on during game number one, but now we are going to get to see what she can do with the ball in her hands. And we're gonna take a quick little break while they do the warm up here on the Tiger Network.
Hannah Boudreaux will get the first look at Rodriguez as ETBU lost, loses the lead, but are not out of the woods yet because Tagawa is at second. And now for ETBU, not the only change. They have a change over at third base as well, looking to try and see the number on the third baseman. Looking like a number nine. But I will not neither confirm nor deny that until I can get a clearer look or until the umpire yells at us about who it is. It number is nine. There we go. Yep, it is going to be number nine. That is going to be Nadia Almanza, junior out of Spring, yeah, Texas, and a transfer yeah, from from um, Navarro College. And we are back into this one. Couple of changes for ETBU. Down by a run, trying to not be down by more than that. First pitch, in for a strike. As Boudreaux is the Trinity Tiger that gets the first look at the new pitcher. This has been a cat fight for the entirety of the game. Next pitch. Too high, 1-1 one, one count. Still one out in the inning, but no double play, no obvious double play right now. Strange things could happen, but they'd be hard pressed to find it. Pitcher currently in the circle is Ava Rodriguez. Now that one line, it is fair, down the right field line. Tagawa will come home to score. Boudreaux gets into second with ease, and now Boudreau with an RBI. Trinity goes up six to four. As it looks like that one may have been in the fence. So difficulty getting it out over in right field for Emma Bell. But that still, Tigers keep on rolling for Trinity. That is a perfect hit there for the Trinity Tigers. Just got it right past the outstretched arm there of Loya and Whenever you get a situation like that, there is so little that you can do. First base gets very, very little time, or first and third get very little time to make their reactions. And as now we see Whitaker coming in, it's just Loya could not do too much about that there. And just an absolutely perfect spot for Boudreaux to put that hit. Now Carson Lee, cleanup hitter for Trinity today. Grounded out in the first RBI single. Pops that one way in the air. And able to track it is Aloya. So, a bit of a sigh of relief for ETBU as they get the second out on the board, thanks to Carson Lee pop up. But now, Jordan Williams picks up the stick and heads to the plate. Still looking for another run. A pitch. Misses for ball one. Trying to stop the damage because Trinity back to back innings with three run spots. Now, next pitch from Rodriguez. Gets it in for a strike. Whitaker has tremendous speed. So they're going to be keeping a good eye on her on the base paths. Tiger score. Tried to steal third base a couple times against Howard Payne with success. That one fouled back by Jordan Williams. One, two count. Trinity did a great job stealing uh, against Howard Payne, especially during game two. Didn't see a whole lot of it during game one, but during game two, they got seven combined steals as a team. That is the most since, since they played Millsaps back in 2000. And, and that one inside they're not going to give the hit by pitch when so two two count whenever we talk to coach Wittenauer, uh she mentioned like this is just a team that has an incredible amount of speed just all throughout every position seems to be loaded with speed and talent that one hit up the middle gets through our Whitaker coming home slides in safe and the senior Jordan Williams Put Trinity up seven to four now. 
Williams has been fantastic defensively, but offensively, she's been kind of a little bit of a hidden weapon almost for this team. And this season, she's been one of the most reliable hitters on this Tiger batting arsenal. And at the moment now, we're going to get to see RC coming back up. RC fouled back. Struck out in the second, two RBI single in the third. Certainly, already has joined a very exclusive class of hitters with two home runs in a game. Big hack there, but gets away from the new catcher, Brady Glenn. Glenn coming in for pile. That allows Williams to John on over to second base. Free of charge. So, Rodriguez, we're going to RC. 0 2 count pitch, swing and a miss. RC ends the bottom of the fourth. What a four spot put up by the Trinity Tigers. They are up seven to four. For Trinity, bottom of ETBU the fourth, looking four runs, desperately to respond in at the top of the fifth. Haley Stum, Nadia Almanza, and Delaney Loya do up for ETBU. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network. Now ETBU being started off by Haley Stum. One for two today. Flew out in the first, doubled in the third. See what she can do with the stick in the fifth. ETBU down by three runs, four to seven against Trinity. The number 16th ranked ETBU Tigers. Not wanting to split this one. First pitch in there for a strike. Great location by RC. Some um, out of Cypress, Texas. The freshman made a big impact in game one, trying to continue to leave an impact in game two. And they certainly need her. That one popped foul. So 0 2 count. Very quickly for Stum. And now. Maybe some movement over in the bullpen, but either way, RC has been giving uh, the uh, designation uh, to pitch as long as she can. That one, uh, foul tip away, kind of jamming Stum once again. Another foul ball towards the Trinity Tiger dugout. During game one against Howard Payne, RC did go the full seven innings. And during game number one up at Concordia, she got more than a full game. Uh, she actually went eight innings during that full nine inning game. And so far here uh, is looking on pace to do pretty good. Uh, we don't have a pitch counter here. Now, RC, one, two count, pitch, two stum. That one hit out into to left field. Del Toro tracking it, brings it in. So, can of corn to start the top of the fifth. One out on the board, brings up number 
12, we are resubbing in. Torin Cummings comes back in. They will not have Nadia Almanza take the stick. RC's first offering in there for a strike. Oh, one count for Cummings. Great pitch there. Cummings thought that, that was going to be a bit high and inside, but instead ended up being a strike. RC, next pitch. Fouled back by Cummings, so another quick 0-2 count. ETBU trying to find that discipline again. But those back-to-back -back complete game shutouts, it's the first time two different Tiger pitchers have accomplished that feat since 2015. So it's been quite a while since that has happened for these Trinity Tigers. A lot to look up to. The, uh, the number just flashed Swing up Swing and a miss. And that will be a strikeout for Jordan Arce as Cummings takes not the best swing. Arce, two outs on the board, very quick, brings up Delaney Loya. The number just flashed up on your screen there uh, a few pitches ago, but Arce uh, at a bit over 70 pitches at the moment. 72 was the number that I saw before about uh, three or four pitches ago. So we will see how deep into this one she goes. Whenever we talked with Coach uh, Wittenauer, she mentioned that uh, pitch count isn't, of course, as big of an issue uh, in softball as compared to baseball, but they still try and limit their numbers to about 80 or 90 per day uh, of practice. Obviously, during game situations are different, but they definitely don't want to tire out RC's arm uh, as she is going to be the or or going to be uh, the the number one going into the rest of this season. Two zero count for Loya. 0 for two today. Flew out into center and grounded out. Next pitch misses. Three zero count. Very fortunate for Loya. It's going to be quite a lot of work for RC to strike out the five hole hitter now. But staying patient, realizing that the previous two hitters going up swung at quite a bit. And now RC 3 0 pitch. Misses. Four pitch walk issued to Delaney Loya. I will bring the order down to the six hole hitter and Emma Bell. Six, right fielder number one, ETBU threatening with Loya on first base. Good hit is what they're looking for out of Bell. The lefty first offering to her. Nothing there, so it's five balls in a row for RC. Try not to make it six. Loya waiting for Bell to put the ball in play. 1 0 offering in there for a strike. So count evens up at 1 and 1. Still two outs in the inning. RC just getting a, getting a touch up on the, on the bag right there behind the circle and getting ready for this one and one, two outs here in the top of the fifth. That one, weak grounder foul. So now one, two count for Emma Bell. The freshman trying to hit, get a hit against the sophomore. Number one on the jersey. Is one for two today. The one two pitch from RC. Doesn't get Belt to swing. Thought about it, but pulled back. So two two count, two outs. Trinity is being super competitive during this game. And I think that's something that's kind of surprising a lot of people. Obviously, this team has a lot of fight in it, but to be able to be playing ET. Uh, be you this close is a real shock. I that think one fouled away. I think to uh, 
to many people in softball because again ETBU is definitely a powerhouse and Trinity after last season I didn't really know what the expectations would be but now coming into this one they have really I think impressed a lot of people not just here but anybody who's going to be watching this game and be like wow they played close that one misses count is juiced 3-2 we'll see what the Tigers have dialed up for the full count pitch. But great patience by Bell. Being a freshman, she waits, swing and a miss. So RC ends the inning on a strikeout. Say they dropped the ball and the runner is safe at first. That's not an error though, is it? It I think they're going to say that it was a drop third strike, but there wasn't a ton of there wasn't a ton of urgency down there by Drew Williams. I think that she didn't know there was a drop third strike, and that's going to allow the runner to go over to first. And now Emma Bell now meeting at the circle. Be curious to see a replay on that from the center field camera view. I'm not sure. I don't think that there are there are reviews in softball because of the cameras, but yeah, a replay there from center field would be very interesting. Center field would be the camera to go to as we're gonna get it here. So the wind up in the pitch. Oh no. yeah, that's where it was dropped. Williams dropped it, and uh, yep, took too long to throw it. Just kind of double clutch there a little bit, and so. That'll mean that there will be runners on second and on first for Arcee as Brady Glenn now coming up to bat. And you can just chalk that one up to just an experience from Williams at the catcher position. First time she ever played catcher was that Howard Payne series. If they needed someone to raise their hand, she did. You always got to root for the ones who volunteer. And sometimes when you're playing out of position, you just make a mental mistake because at first base, she doesn't have to worry about dropping the third strike because she's usually putting them out. But either way, two outs now. ETBU, very good opportunity here. First pitch, misses for ball one against Brady Glenn. Glenn 0 for 1 today, a pop-up and a sacrifice can't drop a sacrifice bunt this time. And of course, the reason why Williams is there at the catcher position is due to a bunch of injuries at that position. Fouled back. You saw uh, Abigail Miller last season who was projected to be uh, the catcher number one for this season, uh, ended up uh, tearing her labrum, I believe, uh, in her shoulder. She will likely be out for the year and then during game one over in Concordia, Dawson Debussy, catcher number two, sprained her thumb. She's out for uh, the uh, the Howard Payne series for this series and likely for a couple more. And so it's just, it's it's kind of a rotating door right now at catcher. You saw um, Hannah Boudreaux get some, or, or, or get some reps at catcher or during game number two against Howard Payne, but she she also picked up uh, an arm related injury during the week and so it's been kind of a you know uh, revolving door of who's healthy enough to even try it count evens up at two and two high pressure situation for RC Glenn trying to put a ball in play to advance her teammates next pitch Swing and a miss. That strike three isn't dropped. So Jordan Arce escapes the jam. ETBU strands runners on first and second. And that's going to be a goose egg for the top of the fifth for ETBU. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Due up for Trinity, Marina De Luna, Sydney Watson, and Angela Baltzel. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network.
Now Marina De La Luna trying to get a hit here. <laughs> Just struck out looking in the second. Fielder's choice in the third. Takes the first pitch for a ball. The senior trying to lead off very well for her Trinity Tigers. Next pitch. In there for a strike. Took a very similar pitch to strike out. So need to be cognizant of that location. Now Rodriguez in for another inning for ETBU. That one over to Almanza. Easy put out for ETBU. So one out on the board very quick. Fantastic heads up play there by Almanza. She's listed as a catcher on, on the roster space, but doing a great job there, able to get the ball with the outstretched glove and get it right into that little pocket, able to lift it up and get it into the hand for the throw over to first. Next pitch, a bit too high, 1-0 count. Catcher playing at third. Trinity certainly has experience at playing catchers at third in the past. Now, ETBU and Rodriguez, next pitch, misses, ball two. So Watson, staying patient, had a great double in the fourth. Really started off that momentum for Trinity. The Tigers of Trinity have put up eight hits. That one in there for a strike, though. Two-one count. And once again, just like, <laughs> I mean, I hate to keep on drawing comparisons to other games, but Howard Payne, game two. Game is held scoreless for Trinity. Watson comes up to bat, hits a double, gets the momentum Watson started. Watson over to left field. And that one taken in by Stum. Easy enough fly out for Stum to handle. Handled much tougher out there, especially in game one. So Watson is retired, and now Angela Baltzel steps up to the dish. Two outs on the board. Rodriguez trying to quiet down the Tiger faithful, stop their momentum. First pitch is a ball. And, you know, just... Looking at this game, looking at the score, it's it's just incredible to see how Trinity has rallied after being down early, or, or, or after not only being down early, but also coming back and being as competitive as they are after the year that they had last year. This really feels like almost like a new era for for Trinity softball under under head coach Bailey Wittenauer and. The energy feels different. I don't know how to describe it, but it feels like there's a different sort of palpable energy here in the stadium, among the players. Just just watching it, it feels like a completely different team. 3-1 count as that latest pitch was a strike. Hitters count for Angela Baltzel. Ground out and a sacrifice fly. That one's going to be hit foul. Heads up over there. Now fans realizing that in the vicinity of a foul ball, always got to keep your wits about you at the park. Three, two count. <laughs> Next pitch. That one hit over into right field. That one will be fair for Angela Baltzel. She heads over to second, and she will be safe. A so a double by Angela Baltzel with two outs on the board. Swings us back to the top of the order and with Hayden Del Toro. Angela Balsall so far this season, it, it's kind of a little bit of a, or kind of a bit of a surprise to see her in the nine hole slot considering coming into the series, she was tied for the leader um, of, of most hits on the team uh, at six. Again, coming into this series, that one was a tie between her and Hayden Del Toro Who's, who's up to bat now, but just an absolutely fantastic performance by Baltzel over the course of this season to really step up into her role, of course, a sophomore out of Antioch, California. So, you know, after a, uh, after, uh, a 244 average during her freshman year, she has really stepped it up this year. Hayden Del Toro in a hole. 
Takes that one for a ball. Runner going to third and is safe. Great base running by Angela Baltzel. So now that threat even more present. Hayden Del Toro, one, two count. Rodriguez trying to strand Baltzel. That's another ball. Count evens out, two and two. Still two outs on the board for ETBU. Del Toro, 0 for 3 today. Ground out, strike out, and reached on an error. And what do you get an RBI out of that error, though? That one misses the zone. Appeal, no check swing. It's not like the umpire over there had the greatest angle. Either way, it is a 3-2 count. But now, very big moment here for Trinity if they can put this runner across. That one fouled back going off the little catcher's mask of Brady Glenn. Here we go. Ever Rodriguez not wanting to fall into the same trap Tamborello did where Tagawa fouled, fouled, fouled until she got a hit. Next pitch. That one will be fouled out of play. I'm sure we'll be finding that one either on the walk path or in the sand volleyball courts over there. I think that there was somebody in the area to grab it. And yep, there's a little kid who's who's running over to deliver the ball into the uh, ETBU dugout now. DBU coming out of Marshall, Texas. Like I mentioned before, they will host the Division Three Women's College World Series this year. Next pitch, high and in. Great patience by Hayden Del Toro to uh, draw the walk. And they threw it over to first, thinking, uh, I guess thinking that it was a strikeout, dropped pitch, number but two, no, it was pretty clearly a ball. So runners on the corners now. Samantha Tagawa had, has had two singles, one for an RBI, and she's drawn a walk. So certainly who you want at the plate if you are Trinity. Runner goes to second and steals the bag. Hayden Del Toro too fast. Fantastic play there by Del Toro. Just using the speed that we know that she has led the team in terms of steals and steal attempts last season. And r really there was nobody close uh, to the numbers that, that she one put up. That one dribbled over to Maddox to throw to first in time. So no more damage done by Trinity. No runs in the bottom of the fifth, but some good scoring opportunities. They strand runners on second and third. Score is seven to four in favor of the Trinity Tigers. We will take a break on the Tiger Network as we head to the top of the sixth. Texas back for the top of the sixth, leading off for ETBU. It should be Mallory Pyle coming up to bat, number 20, but trying to look at the jersey number. Her hair's covering it, so not 100% certain. It's going to be number nine, so up to bat is going to be Nadia Almanza, the junior out of Spring, Texas. Now, the pitch. In there for, not in there. It's going to be ball one. 
So 1-0 count. ETVU needing to score three runs to tie this up, four runs to take the lead. Nadia Almanza grounding it over to De La Luna. And De La Luna has the cannon for the arm, easily throws her out over at first. One out in the top of the six as ETVU needs to use their chances very sparingly. Absolute rocket of a throw there by De La Luna. Just, she wound up and just lasered that thing across over to Carson Lee at first and a fantastic throw to get the first out. First offering to Mary Frances Ellis in for a strike. RC feeling her groove now. So a one count, one out. Everybody waiting for Ellis to try and dink one in the infield. Next offering, that's what she does. And unfortunately for Baltzel, mishandles the grounder. Either way, I'm not sure whether she was gonna throw Ellis out in the first place. She was like already three quarters of the way there. Either way, runner on first for ETBU in the form of Mary Frances Ellis. Baltzel mainly played second base last season, but she's currently playing shortstop here today. And last season uh, had about six errors to her credit. Was a part of three double plays, but the six errors second highest on the team in that regard. So it is a very difficult position to be playing shortstop, one of the more difficult positions, especially in the infield. And, y you know, sometimes it just doesn't go your way with bad bounces, bad hops, and just, just sometimes unable to get a full grip on it. 1-0 count for Tristan Maddox. Takes a strike, so the count evens up at one and one. Maddox, one for one today. Drew a walk in the first, got hit by the pitch in the second, and doubled in the fourth to score a run. And that one run in the fourth was the last time that ETBU scored. But she has the power. That one misses inside, however, 2-1 count. Waiting. Ellis can easily take off for a second base at any time. But we'll see if ETBU tries to play it a bit more conservative as Williams has slowly but surely gotten closer and closer every time they've tried to steal. That pitch misses, 3-1 count. So far today for ETBU, they've only stolen four bases, which I mean, you know, saying only, that's still a very impressive figure, but haven't been caught stealing yet. So four for four in terms of their attempts and Trinity are hoping to at least get one in the CS column before this day is over. Takes that one for a strike. Count goes full. Seeing plenty of full counts this game. We are nearly at five o'clock central time now. Started these games at 12, so solid five hours of softball. That one too high. Maddox reaches first. Still one for one on the day. But now Courtney White, number her three, senior four, counterpart, four, White. will try and drive in uh, the runs necessary. Now, RC once again feeling the pressure. One out on the board, though. Could try and draw up a double play. Tigers have started to move in, but that one hit up the middle. We'll see if they send the runner home. They will. The throw to the plate will not reach as Lee cuts it off. But Mary Frances Ellis comes in to score easily. ETBU only down by two now. RC taking a moment, but now Haley Stum. Steps on up to the Oche for ETBU. Stum, during the earlier game, had an absolutely fantastic time. Four for five on the day. That one gets away from Williams. Runners advance. So now no force outs for Trinity. 
here we go yet again. One swing it ties this game. Four for five for Stum during the early performance. Does have a double to her credit as well. That one coming during the third inning. 1-0 pitch. That one hit over into left center field. Taken in by Watson. The runner goes home. And Lee will not throw it to home. But ETBU inches just a little bit closer. They're oh down yeah. by one run. Doing what they need to. Courtney White on second base as Maddox tacks up to get in off the sacrifice. Torin Cummings now no, it's trying to drive in the tying run in the form of White, who is standing on second right now. First pitch misses for ball one. Good take there by Cummings. She's uh, She's got two strikeouts to her name so far today, or, or, or during this game. And whenever you've got that sort of situation, you'd expect her to be a little bit more aggressive, trying to avoid getting struck out uh, and adding on to that strike total. But in a situation like that, a very, very good take there to set up ball one. Conversation between coach and player on the ETBU side. Next pitch, that one hit high into center field. Watson takes it in, and that will end at the top of the sixth. ETBU puts two across, however. They trail by one. It is seven to six in favor Ladies of Trinity, Trinity, Trinity University. Due up for the Tigers in the bottom of the six will be Boudreaux, Lee, and Williams. Stay tuned on the Tiger Network. Leading off for Trinity in the bottom of the sixth, Hannah Boudreau, two for two today. A single, a double, and a drawn walk. That double drove in a run. Boudreau trying to stay perfect today, make it a three for three day. But right now, Rodriguez trying to push it up to the top of the seventh and get her team a winning shot. Don't want to lose it near the end. After a bit of chatter between coach and the home plate umpire, we are back underway. Boudreaux awaits the first offering from Ava Rodriguez. A pitch misses for ball one to Boudreaux. Boudreaux one of two twins on the Trinity Tigers, sister Sydney Boudreaux. She takes that one for strike one on the inside, one one count. I haven't seen Sydney too much so far during this season. Uh, three appearances, five plate appearances in particular. Uh, she's, if anything, had more of a field presence than a batting presence, but. Of course, still very early on in the season, still trying to figure out where everybody goes in their respective roles. One, two count for Boudreaux. That one too high. Glenn having to pick it out of the air. So count goes even at two and two. The ETBU Tigers stick to their defensive alignment. Still no changes since the pitching replacement. Two innings ago, that one hit high into right center field, but tracked well by Emma Bell. She decides to just run it in 
and hands it off to Courtney White. So, so now Carson Lee, cleanup hitter for Trinity, will try and get herself on base. Lee one for three today. First pitch. Misses for ball one. Last time up. Swung at the first thing she saw and popped it out. Takes the first pitch she sees this time. In the third, she had an RBI single. In the first, she grounded out. That one hit over into center field. Tracked and caught by Mary Frances Ellis. So two quick outs for the Trinity Tigers. ETBU and Ava Rodriguez doing a great job cooling down this Tiger offense for Trinity. Jordan Williams, one for two today. The senior has uh, drawn a walk and had an RBI single. Takes that first pitch for a ball. Also grounded out. Rodriguez looks at the wrist. Next pitch. Misses on the inside, 2-0 count. And in this situation right here, you definitely don't want to be too aggressive. You've got the numbers. You've got the advantage with the balls and strikes. Just don't, don't swing at a pitch that isn't yours. And just do your best to find a good pitch because in this situation, Rodriguez is the one on the back foot. And a defensive substitution for ETBU, Jalen Perez. As that one, soft liner ends the inning. Liner to Maddox. We'll go to the top of the seventh. The ETBU has three no outs to work there. with. No Trinity up seven to six on their six. Tiger foes. We'll take a break on the Tiger Network as we head to the penultimate inning. And now, due up for ETBU, Delaney Loya, followed by whoever ETBU puts in on deck, have yet to be seen. They will not have Jalen Perez swing the bat. Instead, they go back to Bell, who awaits on deck. And Brady Glenn in the hole. Arcy trying to close it out. First pitch. Misses for ball one. It is a tightrope act for RC. Not much room to work with. And now, Delaney Loya, 0 for 2 today. Drew a walk in the fifth. RC, next pitch, misses for ball two. Has had a little bit of trouble locating the zone in the latter part of this one. She's tallied up five strikeouts and issued three walks. Compared to last season, this is really a game that's kind of out of sorts for ETBU. They're averaging about seven runs per game, which is typical. But last season, they only gave up like, like a tiny sliver less than two runs per game. So they were averaging 7-2 wins regularly. And this is a situation right now where they find themselves on the back foot with or, or with just three outs to work with. 2-1 count. 
That one hit over into right field. Gonzalez coming in, makes the catch. Gets the can of corn, and now one out in the top of the seventh. Two chances left. Emma Bell. Batting six, right fielder number one, Emma Bell. Looking at the wrist, she has her signal. See De La Luna playing in just a little bit, and Carson Lee playing in just a little bit. Expecting a grounder from Bell. The freshman takes the first pitch for a strike, 0-1 count. Bell so far today did have a single during the second, but then after that grounded out and struck out, a strikeout coming in the fifth and that ground out coming in the third. So Bell would really like to step it up here, but RC gonna be doing everything that she can to keep that from happening. That pitch outside, uh, trying to get Bell to chase. One and one. RC trying uh, to strike out Bell again. Struck her out in the fifth. Forced a grounder in the third. Bell singled in the second. On. That one hit up the middle. So Bell gets on base. base hit by Emma getting Bell. it past the glove of a Baltzel. Now, ETBU has something to work with as the game-tying run stands on first. Brady Glenn steps up to bat. Player number 11, Brady Glenn. Glenn looking for the signal. Glenn is 0 for 2 today. Sacrificed in the second. Popped up in the fourth and struck out in the fifth. Arcee's first pitch. In there for a strike. Staying aggressive with one out on the board, a double play ends it. The, er, the number one thing that Glenn cannot do is let this one get down in the infield, particularly towards the direction of Baltzel or Tagawa, because if that happens, then a double play, uh, again, to end it could be the thing. Runner goes, and the throw was in time, but the tag not applied in time. Bell steals second base. None of the Tigers can believe it. See it on replay here. Good pop up, good throw. And uh, perhaps just got a hand in there. One and one count. And now game tying run and scoring position. Very big steal by Bell. That one fouled off. One, two count. RC would love a strikeout here. And that also eliminates the potential game-ending double play. So RC finding herself in a bit of a pickle. But it's something that we saw during game number one. She did allow runners on base, did, did allow uh, opposing runners to get into good positions, but just managed to close it out. Pitch. Yes! Catches are looking. <laughs> Brady Glenn will have to head back to the dugout. Great pitch by Jordan Arce. And now, the last chance for ETBU lies with Nadia Almanza. 0 for 1 today. Bell stands on second, signifies the game tying run. First pitch to Almanza. Misses for ball one. The sacrifice not in play here, so this is do or die here for Almanza. And if she can get onto base, that would bring up uh, Francis. But next pitch in there for a strike. The, the real big threat would be Tristan Maddox, who is still two batters away. So for ETBU, they're really going to need uh, their, uh, their number eight and their number nines to really step it up. 1-1 one, one pitch from Arcee. That one swung. Snagged by De La Luna, the throw to first. 
and the Tigers get the upset against ETBU. Trinity wins it seven to six. ETBU and Trinity go Dutch and split the series. A fantastic day for the Trinity Tigers here at home. You can see it on your screen. That third and fourth innings were the difference makers. All of their runs were scored there and it wasn't just like one or two big hits. It wasn't like during game one where it all came off of Jordan Arce home runs. They were sustained offensive performances. This is a team that whenever the bats get hot, they get hot for everybody. And, and it results in quite possibly one of the biggest upset victories that we have seen in quite some time. It is their first non-conference ranked win against an opponent since UMHB last year. Both ASC opponents. And now your final score, 7-6. Tony Tamborello taking the loss for ETBU. Jordan Arce collecting the win for Trinity. And Trinity certainly on everyone's radar as both teams gather around the circle. A great show of the beauty that is softball and sportsmanship. And just going over the stats again, Jordan Arce, complete game number two on the season. Wasn't the shutout like we saw against Howard Payne, but what an incredible performance by Jordan Arce tonight. Or, well, not tonight, but this afternoon. Just an all-around fantastic performance. She did it uh, with the bat in game number one and then in game number two, managing to hold ETBU. And there were some moments there where it looked like it was gonna get away from her. There were runners on base, runners in some very big scoring positions. And then all of a sudden it just kind of materialized into an advantage for her. But we're just gonna look over the schedule here for these next two teams. Trinity gonna be hosting here uh, next weekend as well, so can't wait to be covering those games uh, here on the Tiger Network. Trinity next week and uh, host two more teams in the ASC gauntlet, Harden Simmons on Friday for a doubleheader and McMurray on Saturday. Meanwhile, for ETBU, they will head over to Georgetown tomorrow to play at Southwestern. So ETBU fans, be sure to go out and support the team if you're traveling with them still, or tune in to the Southwestern live stream. They always appreciate all the support that they get. It's the fans in Division Three that make it for the athletes. But Trinity able to win it off the backs of some great hitting performances from Samantha Tagawa and Hannah Boudreau, both going two for three today. Jordan Williams had an RBI. Carson Lee had an RBI. Some great hitting and good pitching from RC makes it so they split with the nationally ranked East Texas Baptist Tigers. For everyone in the control room, Caleb Reed, the man behind it all, Josh Machigemba, Garrett Landon working the stats, and James Hill being the voice of the Tigers. I am Reed Rosales. And I hope everybody has a great Saturday night.